1021 on your dial all day, every day. Eagle 102 KJFM Radio. The Eagle 102 Game of the Week is on the air. On your only on-air sports leader at 1021 KJFM, Eagle 102. Now, the Eagle 102 Area High School Football Game of the Week. And welcome to the semifinals of the Class 2 District 6 Tournament here on KJFM. Mark Fronick, Jim Ross at Monroe City High School tonight as the Bowling Green Bobcats, the number three seed in this tournament, take on the number two seed, seed Panthers. And uh, looking at the records, looking at uh, the, the points for, points against, this uh, matchup seems on paper to be one of the best in the state tonight. Without question, uh if you if you take out the Oak Grove game, you and I were talking about this earlier. Both teams would be seven and two, and both teams would have lost to Centralia and Palmyra. And we'll get into the scores and comparable scores later on. But yeah, on paper, this looks like it should be a dandy football game. Uh, you know, we talked also back to the Centralia game. We felt that was a game where it could have gone either way for Bowling Green. Mm -hmm. it, it either ruins them or they really learn something. And it seems, uh, based on the play since that game. They've learned something, and hopefully they're ready for the moment tonight. Definitely, and we'll talk more about the matchups and uh, what that moment means when we start the pregame show. Our countdown to kickoff is next on Eagle 102. As many as 50% of people don't take their medication as prescribed. Some never even fill their prescription, even if they don't feel well. Missing or not taking medication can be deadly. For questions about medication, your local HealthMart Pharmacy is here to help. For fast, friendly service and affordable prices every day, visit your local Health Mart Pharmacy, Bowling Green Pharmacy, located right on the square at 8 North Court in Bowling Green. Lynn's Heritage House isn't your average senior living facility. At Lynn's, residents have an abundance of social and recreational activities, including trips to the Twin Pike Family YMCA, numerous craft projects, and even the occasional day trip around Pike County. As a resident, you can enjoy the same independent lifestyle you've always enjoyed, but with the peace of mind knowing that help is available when needed. For more information, visit Lynn's Heritage House, 800 Kelly Lane in Louisiana, or online at lensheritage.com. Founded in 2000, Sparks Maintenance Contracting out of Bowling Green has since been performing industrial maintenance nationwide and plans to continue growing. Sparks Maintenance Contracting, attention to detail and compassion are only some of the many things that separate them from other competitors. Teamwork is the key to success in business and in sports. Best wishes to all the area teams from Sparks Maintenance Contracting, proudly serving America. At Craig Bowen CPA, they guide their clients through a full range of tax planning and preparation decisions with strategies that minimize your tax liabilities, maximize your cash flow, and keep you on track to your financial goal. Craig Bowen CPA in Bowling Green encourages everyone to support their favorite high school sports team this season. Now more than ever, let your team know they have your full support. Craig Bowen CPA on the square in Bowling Green. Hear all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth. Sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. It's time now for the Eagle 102 pregame show. Sponsored by Bowling Green Pharmacy. Getting ready for the three-seed Bobcats and the two-seed Monroe City Panthers here from Monroe City High School. Mark Fronick, Jim Ross, and our countdown to kickoff. And, Jim, uh, the last time Bowling Green was here, it didn't end so well in the, in the postseason. I think this is a, a more rounded uh, Bowling Green team here tonight. Oh, I, I agree 100%. Uh, and I think you probably had a Monroe City football team with a little more horsepower uh, back in 2018 is what you're referring to when uh, Bowling Green got beat 48-12. to and uh, so, yeah, I think the, the gap between the two teams has, prob has probably narrowed a little bit from, mm -hmm. from 2018. And uh, it's going to be a really interesting contrast in styles because people that aren't familiar with the wing T, you don't see that very often. It's, it's kind of an option, misdirection, a lot of motion kind of play. And it, it, it will force Bowling Green to do something that they only had to do one other game against uh, South Callaway when they ran the option. It's assignment it's assignment defense, and if you leave your assignment, the option happens and it's a long play for the offense. So it's going to be a disciplinary thing for the Bowling Green defense, and actually it's, it's a good thing that they got to see something similar to it in, in the South Callaway game. I think the last uh, 
you know, wing offense uh, was that single wing from uh, Winfield we saw years ago. They they ran for a couple of seasons, but uh, it is uh, uh, luckily for Bowling Green in that uh, South Callaway game, they did a really good job holding their assignments and uh, and really shut down that uh, Bulldog offense. They did, and I think you're going to see they'll have a bit of a size advantage on the line. Uh, Monroe City's a smaller, quicker line, and that's what you kind of need when you're running a wing tee. But the thing, here's the thing about Monroe City that people really, really don't realize, especially in a small school. And I've spent since 2008 watching Monroe City play with my kids uh, when Louisiana was in the CCC. There's one thing they do better than anybody in the league, mm-hmm. and that's punch you in the nose. They will hit you like you haven't been hit before, and it's been that way for a long time, and I – I can guarantee it'll be the same thing tonight. Yeah, even though they, they like you said, are not as big as uh, some of the other uh, uh, lines out there, they, they can hit. And uh, I've seen it on high right, highlight reels all season. Uh, for their size, they're really good hitters. And uh, like you said, it's been that way forever. Uh, let's talk about some comparables between these two teams, some matchups this season. Well, the matchups are a little bit deceiving. And the reason I say that is because the timing of the matchups. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bowling Green lost to Palmyra 13 to nothing, but that was the second game of the season. And I think everybody would admit that Bowling Green's a little bit different football team. Where Palmyra lost 30 to 20, and that was about three weeks ago, so a little later in the season. Then the other, the, the, the EMO conference comparable is Monroe City had a game COVID it out in the first game of the year just like Bowling Green did. Bowling Green went to Oak Grove. Monroe City uh, played South Callaway. Mm -hmm. That was a double overtime win for Monroe City. 34-32 while as you just alluded to three weeks ago Bowling Green just took it to South Callaway and won 54-14. So again you're talking about the first game of the year for Monroe City. They're a different club and you're talking about three weeks ago for that comparable. The most comparable game that you can look at in terms of time is the Centralia game, which I think uh, they were back-to-back weeks, if I'm not mistaken. I believe so. Bowling Green played them, lost, of course, as everyone knows, in that heartbreaker 24-22, but then Centralia beat Palmyra 18 to nothing. So that's the most recent and probably the most uh, profound comparison that you can come up with when you're trying to compare scores. It's on the road for Bowling Green. That makes a difference it's on turf uh-huh. they haven't played on turf with the exception of maybe oak grove i don't know if they had a turf i believe field they or did not. Uh, but they haven't played on turf since then uh so they'll, that'll take some adjusting to get to because you're going to be a little quicker uh-huh <laughs> when you hit the ground you're going to stop a little faster you know so there are some things that bowling is going to have to adjust to early in this game with the turf and uh, they'll need to do it quickly if they want to want to win this football game watching the warm-ups, and I know that's no real indication, but Bowling Green looked like their routes were really crisp out there. So. Yeah, yeah, and they're, uh, uh, I talked to one of the assistant coaches before the game, and he said, you know, we're, we're locked and ready. I mean, we're ready to play football tonight, and uh, uh, the Centralia game, as we talked about, was a game where they, one, they, they, they looked at a team that they want to be like, Two, they found out they can play football because that was a that was one of the top teams in the state. And number three, they can be a championship team tonight. They get to try and prove it. Now, getting back to that, that's now been several weeks ago. That Centralia game, and uh, it's pretty much been blowout after blowout win since then. Is that still in their minds uh, that that game? Well, it doesn't help them, but I think. When you compare it to Monroe City having an off week last week, yeah. I think you're probably better, unless you're banged up, yeah. which I don't knew, I don't know that either team's got any injuries that are. No, that I are, think both both teams are looking pretty good. I think they're both pretty healthy. So and unless you're injured and you need to recover, that off week's a good thing. But when you're not injured, probably playing, even though even though uh, Bowling Green hasn't been tested since Centralia. Uh, they, they played football. You're hitting. You're, you're doing your things. It's competition. You're not practicing against the guys you've practiced against since August. And uh, so, yeah, I think that's probably somewhat of a negative for Bowling Green, but overall a positive because I think they were playing a competitive football game where Monroe City was sitting at home. However, probably Monroe City spent a fair part of last Friday night 
in Bowling Green watching. Most definitely, most <laughs> definitely. We'll take a break. We'll come back with our keys to the game after this on the Eagle 102 countdown to kickoff. Daily life is a bit different right now than what we're used to. Some are feeling the effects more than others, but let's remember that this too shall pass and try to find ways to keep positive, help others in need, continue to support our businesses as best we can, but also take this time of distancing and shutdowns to self-reflect and improve. Spend quality time with family, exercise, pray, tackle a home improvement project, even if it's just a power cleaning inside and out, but do something that helps you feel empowered and moving forward. Vicki Cadwalder Real Estate, praying for good to come out of trials. Bowling Green Ready Mix and Kearns Construction, your high quality one-two punch to knock out tough building projects. Bowling Green Ready Mix for all your concrete and concrete supplies and the only plant locally owned and operated and Kearns Construction for new homes, remodeling jobs, repair work, you name it, and Ed will tackle it. Just call 573-324-3433 and let the friendly, knowledgeable staff at Bowling Green Ready Mix and Kearns Construction Company go to work for you. As many as 50% of people don't take their medication as prescribed. Some never even fill their prescription, even if they don't feel well. Missing or not taking medication can be deadly. For questions about medication, your local Health Mart Pharmacy is here to help. For fast, friendly service and affordable prices every day, visit your local Health Mart Pharmacy, Bowling Green Pharmacy, located right on the square at 8 North Court in Bowling Green. Time now for the Eagle 102 Keys to the Game on KJFM. Sponsored by Vicki Cadwallader Real Estate in Louisiana. Well, key one, I think, for Bowling Green is uh, don't make the, the moment bigger than it is. Uh, don't get yourself overhyped. Uh, come in and play Bowling Green football. I think uh, if you can stay at an even keel, this this one's going to be a, a pretty good contest. I agree with that 100%. Don't get overwhelmed by the moment because, again, you, you got to refer back to the Centralia game. They've got the ball with three minutes and 50-some-odd seconds to go in the game, and all they've got to do is get a first down and, and – and probably just one first down, and Centre is going to burn their timeouts, and they're going to win that football game. First play from scrimmage, penalty, 10-yard penalty. They're behind the chains. Now you've got to do things you don't necessarily want to do. Ended up uh, a three and out, and you got to punt it away, and next thing you know, you lose the football game. So if, if you get into that moment, you can't be overwhelmed by that. You've got to be able to lock down, concentrate, execute the plays without mistakes, and that's what will help you win the football game. And, of course – what we always talk about is the mistakes. I yeah. mean, and in a game of this magnitude, that obviously they're 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 magnified exponentially with, particularly with turnovers. You got to take care of the football tonight. You can't give the other team extra offensive series. And if you can do, if you can win the turnover battle and play relatively clean in terms of flags, you got a really really good chance of winning tonight. And uh, going back to what we said in the open. Uh, defensively, you have to keep your assignments and uh, and be aware of what's going on around you. If someone misses, uh, someone else has got to be there to back them up. And we talked a lot about Bowling Green. Look at the Monroe City side of it. Probably the biggest strength of Bowling Green's team this year is their offensive line. They're yeah. big and they're mean and they run you over. And so Monroe City, they've got problems that they've got to worry about. Uh, on the defensive side of the football, too, you've got a, a big offensive line. You've got an experienced tailback. You've got a, a, a fullback uh, in Bowen that can run the football. You've got a quarterback that can run and throw. It's a dual, dual threat quarterback. So it's not just the fact that, you know, Bowling Green's got to take care of Monroe City. That's not what we mean because there are issues for Monroe City coming into this game as well. Uh, and uh, you didn't even mention uh, the very elusive Michael Starks. Uh, uh, he can line up at wide receiver or running back. And uh, uh, being a dual threat, boy, that's a, a big weapon for Bowling Green. Well, and, and one of the things that, that has been talked about by the talking heads this week about this is is on the line they feel like that, that, that Bowling Green may have the advantage, but uh, – Monroe does throw the football. They're not an all-run football team. They average 13 passes a game. And the question is, is is, is the defensive backfield for Bowling Green ready? Now, you and I know that we've seen interception after interception after interception in the mo more recent weeks. But when you're playing assignment football, keen on the run, will they catch the Bowling Green back, uh, defensive back slip, sleeping and, and, and get a hit a big one? Because uh, – 
that's definitely a possibility. So they'll have to be on their toes as well. Al, and uh, with uh, the ball hawks that Bowling Green has at the linebacker position, uh, pretty much uh, led by the sophomore this season, Gunnar Bryant, I think that does free up the DBs to, to kind of uh, – uh, be aware of, of a pass play as well. Well, and it's kind of the age-old story. If you can tr- control the line of scrimmage, stop the run, and put a little pressure on the quarterback, then that, that's what we've seen uh, the last three or four weeks with the, with the number of interceptions. The defensive line has been able to put some stress on the quarterback. His accuracy hasn't been the best, and they've been able to pick him off, and, and uh, some of them very important uh, touchdowns. Or interceptions run and run for touchdown. Exactly, and uh, and forcing fumbles. Bowling Green does that well as well. We've got uh, those are our keys to the game. Brought to you by Vicky Cadwallader Real Estate. Uh, we've got our starting lineup still to come here on Countdown to Kickoff on Eagle 102. This is Kyle Scherter, Assistant Vice President at Community State Bank of Missouri. We offer a variety of loans to meet your needs. Whether you're looking for a conventional loan or a HELOC or an FHA, VA, or USDA loan, give us a call. We have some of the best rates around. Community State Bank of Missouri, your hometown community bank since 1887. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. When it comes to buying or selling real estate, you can count on the professionals at Penrod Real Estate in Louisiana. Serving Pike County and surrounding areas, Penrod Real Estate can find buyers for your home or property and can also assist in helping you find the home of your dreams. Residential or commercial, the friendly folks at Penrod Real Estate invite you to reach out if you're in need of help in any area of the real estate process. Phone 754-6922 or visit the office at 618 Georgia in Louisiana. Penrod Real Estate looks forward to serving you. The area's home improvement and rental equipment headquarters is La Crosse Lumber Company in Bowling Green. Check out great rates on rental equipment and save lots of money. La Crosse Lumber Company in Bowling Green carries a large inventory of equipment to make that tough job easier for the do-it-yourselfer. All your building supplies plus blueprint service available and ask about free delivery. The oldest, most reliable lumber and hardware company in the Midwest since 1873. La Crosse Lumber Company, 1014 West Adams in Bowling Green. Phone 324-5431. As many as 50% of people don't take their medication as prescribed. Some never even fill their prescription, even if they don't feel well. Missing or not taking medication can be deadly. For questions about medication, your local HealthMart Pharmacy is here to help. For fast, friendly service and affordable prices every day, visit your local HealthMart Pharmacy, Bowling Green Pharmacy, located right on the square at 8 North Court in Bowling Green. The Eagle 102 starting lineups on KJFM are sponsored by Community State Bank of Missouri in Bowling Green and Troy. And your starting lineups for this district semifinal for the number two seed Monroe City Panthers. They're seven and two on the season, coached by David Kirby. And uh, they'll start offensively at center, a senior, number 70, Joshua Ryan. A junior at tackle, number 69, Bo Patterson. The other tackle is a senior, number 65, Cecil Masterson. Uh, at uh, the guard position, a senior, number 64, uh, Connor uh, Paff, Paff. And uh, the other guard is a sophomore, number 57, Jag Hayes. The offensive backfield for the uh, Monroe City Panthers. The wing back is a senior, number 21, Kelson Painter. Uh, sophomore uh, at uh, fullback, number 24, Keaton Penewald. And the running back is a junior, number 11, very good athlete, uh, Josh Talton. Uh, the quarterback is a junior, number nine, Kyle Hayes. And just two receivers. Uh, the wide receiver is a senior, number 12, Logan Bulig. And at tight end is a junior, number 14, Dion White. For the Bowling Green Bobcats, they're 7-3, and three, the number three seed in this tournament, coached by Joe Chin. Defensively, they'll start a senior at defensive back, number one, Michael Starks. Also at DB, a junior, number 16, Cooper Keel. Number 26 at defensive back, uh, Owen Niemeyer, he's a junior, and uh, number 89 at DB, uh, senior Ryan Cordy. The uh, linebackers, number 42, a senior, Clay Lazier. Uh, number 33, a junior, Charlie Bowen. And number 24, a sophomore at linebacker, Gunnar Bryant. And then the uh, defensive line, the tackles defensively are senior number 76, Jacob Bowen, and number 59, a sophomore, Devin Rue. The ends, number 55, a senior, Tristan Charlton, and number three, a senior, Hayden Finley. I think that's all the uh, defensive starters for Bowling Green. I got 11 on each side. So there's your starters. Uh, The officials for this ballgame? 
I do have the officials. Caught me taking a little nap over here, didn't you? They're out of the Interscholastic Association of Football Officials. The referee will be Bill Lashley. The umpire is Sean Carbons. The line judge, Chris Teague. Headlines, been Steve Bernardino. And the back judge, John Lammert. The Interscholastic what? (laughs) Association of Football Officials, the IAFO. All right. That's a mouthful. Officials Association. Yeah, there's the Mark Twain Officials Association up in northeast Missouri and the uh, couple of associations out of St. Louis. Uh, Yeah, you didn't know that? Well, I, I knew that uh, they had associations. That that one in particular is uh, is very grandiose. Well, I don't I don't recognize any of those names, so I wonder if it's not from around this area. Would be my guess, but yeah. that's that's probably a good thing. With uh, with that, you would think they would come out in uh, in the red jackets with uh, like a you know frilly shirt or something. I, I actually did see one of them running around before the game with his uh, ma- mask in the matching stripes of his jersey. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, that, fancy. You know, coordinated. Very uh, fancy. Clothing coordinated. Got his granimals right for today. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, our starting lineups and our officials for this ball game. More of the countdown to kickoff. We're about uh, 10 minutes away here on Eagle 102. Support the Louisiana Bulldogs with the new Bulldog debit card from Bank of Louisiana. This card has all the benefits of a traditional debit card, but every time you use it to make a purchase, Bank of Louisiana will make a donation to the Louisiana School District. A convenient, secure way to pay, all while supporting your local school. Stop by Bank of Louisiana today to get your Bulldog debit card. Bank of Louisiana, member FDIC. This is Tracy Brookshire, Marketing Coordinator and Public Information Officer for Pike County Health Department Home Health and Hospice here in Missouri. We are doing our best to keep our community informed as much as possible regarding how the COVID-19 pandemic is affecting our county. Visit our dedicated COVID-19 page on our website at pikecountyhealth.org for resources, latest news, updated case counts, and a contact form for questions and concerns specifically related to the virus. Visit our website to subscribe to our PCHD e-news and be the first to know about any updates and resources we have to offer in our communications. Stay safe out there, Pike County. Your health is our priority, and together we will get through this concerning time. Bowling Green Insurance is here to serve all your insurance needs. Bowling Green Insurance offers companies to cover your farm, home, auto, and crop needs. Call Fred or Jackie today to get a customized quote that will fit you and your budget. Bowling Green Insurance is an independent insurance agency. That means they can offer several companies to fit you. Give Bowling Green Insurance a call today to get a quote. 573-324-5762 or 573-324-CROP. Bowling Green Tractor wants to change the way you think about yard work with their Ego 56-volt arc lithium battery-powered lawnmowers, weed eaters, blowers, trimmers, and chainsaws. At Bowling Green Tractor, you can walk in and see for yourself just how easy these products are to handle. So easy, anyone can use them. Once you try it, you'll just have to buy it. Stop by Bowling Green Tractor to see how easy yard work can be. Bowling Green Tractor, your home for ego. Power beyond belief. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102 is brought to you by Cellular and Satellite Center, the Mercantile Bank and Bowling Green Tractor. Waiting for the teams to take the field here ahead of this district semifinal in Class 2, District 6. The other game going on in this district, number one seed Palmyra will host number four seed Clark County. Clark County at home last week outlasted uh, Highland 52-50. to So that's uh, the other game in this district, Class 1, District 2. Uh, South Calloway, the one seed, takes on five seed Paris, who beat uh, Father Tolton uh, 24-6 last week. Mark Twain beat... Uh, South Shelby 18 to 14, and we'll take on the Louisiana Bulldogs, the six seed who got past um, Principia in a forfeit last week. And then Class Two District Five, it'll be Hallsville against Herman, the one against the five, and the uh, number two seed North Callaway against the number three seed Montgomery County, who of course beat Van Far 47-20 last week. Getting ready for the national anthem. We'll be back with more countdown to kickoff after this on Eagle 102. Cellular and Satellite Center is the only stop you need to make when it comes to satellite providers, offering direct TV and dish network along with antenna installs. Wait, there's more. They also offer several options for internet service with Viasat, HughesNet, and AT&T. Hold on, there's still more. 
They can also do security system installations, have TVs and stocks, mounts and cables. Now a special message from Matthew Niemeyer himself. If you call an 800 number and they say we will be the local installer, they are wrong. Contact Matthew at Sailor and Satellite Center in Bowling Green, your local authorized dealer. Is it time to renew, redo, or rebuild? People's Bank and Trust can help you make those home improvements without springing a leak in your budget. I'm Christine Rutherford, and we have loans designed specifically for repairs and renovations, along with home equity lines of credit. Stop by your local People's Bank in Bowling Green, and let's talk about how People's Bank can help you. People's Bank and Trust, online at www.pbtc.net, or give me a call at 573-324-2525. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender, MLO number 421603, NMLS number 407724. When you support a locally owned pharmacy, you're contributing to the growth of the community. The dollars you spend stay right here to support our local community. HealthMart pharmacies are locally owned pharmacies. There's one right here. HealthMart pharmacists have a personal commitment to their communities because just like you, they support their community. HealthMart pharmacies are locally owned and hometown proud. Louisiana is a HealthMart town. Family Drug HealthMart Pharmacy. The right people, the right price, right downtown. HealthMart, caring for you and about you. Your one-stop shop for all your automotive needs is still Mid-America Auto and Towing. They perform state inspections, run diagnostics, and specialize in brake repair. They do everything from preventative maintenance to engine repair and more. Mid-America will also guarantee the lowest prices on tires. Stop in, browse their pre-owned vehicles, and make sure to ask about their senior citizen and military discounts. Financing is available. To get a sneak peek of their inventory, visit MidAmericaAutoAndTowing.com. MidAmerica Auto and Towing, just off Highway 54 in Bowling Green. High School Sports on KJFM is brought to you by Vicki Cadwallader, Real Estate and Perkins Electrical Service. Well, this one's going to be close tonight. Bowling Green, the three seed at seven and three. Monroe City, the two seed at seven and two. Uh, Bowling Green averaging almost two full points per game, uh, more than uh, Monroe City, and are giving up almost a point less per game. So advantage Bowling Green in that category. We're just hoping that this one gets uh, decided a little quicker than the pre- presidential election. <laughs> uh, what a mess. <laughs> That's all I can say about that. What uh, other, other things uh, going on uh, coming into this contest? Uh, you know, uh, well, there are a lot of other uh, a couple other interesting games uh, tonight. Uh, Bowling Green, or Bowling Green, Boonville's at Blair Oaks. Blair Oaks, one of the top teams in the state. Uh, they'll play the winner of Southern Boone at Centralia. The interesting part about that game is Centralia is the home school. They haven't played the home game all year, and so they're playing that game at Macon High School. Mm. Uh, Southern Boone actually beat Macon at Macon last week, so a familiar spot for Southern Boone. And in the Class 4 of the area schools, Kirksville, uh, plays Mobley, and Mexico is at Hannibal. So we'll keep track of all these games for you, as we usually do, and uh, keep you up to date. Captain's heading out on the field, and it looks like uh, Hayes will be the – Kyle Hayes, the quarterback, will be the co- the uh, lone captain for Monroe City. And – Everybody Jake, came out pretty much for Bowling Green. Right, and then Jacob Bowen will be the representative captain with the coaches. Hey, I want to give a shout-out to our old buddy Jim Ford. I had lunch with him today of KJFM, KPCR broadcasting fame going way back. He's doing well, so good to have lunch with him, and I'm sure he's probably listening tonight. Yeah, I had that uh, that big auction uh, a little while back. Yeah, last was it last week? Yeah, two weeks ago? Two 25th, weeks ago, maybe. I think. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. That's right. My daughter's home from college, so and did, she's did, listening. So did he pay? I mean, he's he did. Yeah, I almost I, I, I almost didn't think I was going to make it because I had a mild heart attack at lunch. <laughs> you should have seen the mothballs when he pulled that wallet out. Holy smokes! <laughs> Always good to see Jim, and I think he went over and visited with Joe Lewis, our old buddy, longtime uh, morning show guy from uh, KPCR back in the day. So uh, always good to see those guys from days gone by. Monroe City won the toss, and we'll see what they do with the toss. I think they might be taking it. We'll see momentarily. Yeah, Bowling Green's going to be kicking off this ball game. Monroe City will get the first possession. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back with kickoff after this. It's the semifinals of the Class 2 District 6 tournament on Eagle 102. 
It's time again for your annual mammogram, and Pike County Memorial Hospital is here for you. Now, state-of-the-art 3D mammography is closer to you than ever before. Receive the highest quality mammograms and bone density scans from our certified technologist right here in Pike County. Plus, your records and former scans can easily be transferred to us so we can keep everything up to date. It's state-of-the-art technology and the quality care you can count on right in your own backyard. For more information, go to pcmh-mo.org. Bundle at Pike Pike County Mutual Insurance and save. Pike County Mutual offers home auto discounts simply by placing your auto insurance through one of several auto companies that Pike County Farmers Mutual represent and your home with Pike County Mutual. Ask about the great rates on your personal vehicle, farm trucks, big or small, or even your motorcycle and side-by-sides. Stop by and see myself, Corey Buchanan, Buddy Bibb, or Kathy Gam at your hometown insurance company since 1895. Come home and share with Pike County Mutual Insurance on the square in Bowling Green. You'll be glad you did. The Mercantile Bank of Louisiana is introducing Merck PK Mobile, mobile banking with remote deposit capture. Any customer with online banking can now access your Mercantile Bank accounts from any device, including your smartphone and tablet, everywhere you go. With the ability to take a picture of your check and deposit it into your Mercantile Bank account, you'll never have to worry about getting to the bank. Find more information by visiting MerckBK.com. The Mercantile Bank, where they've been serving the Louisiana area for more than 100 years. Located on the corner of 3rd and Georgia Streets in downtown Louisiana. Member FDIC. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102 is brought to you by State Farm Insurance, Cindy Blaylock, Young Enterprises Incorporated, and Pike County Memorial Hospital. Low line drive kick to start this ball game, and uh, Monroe City takes a knee at the 27-yard line, so that's where they'll start first and 10. And they are quickly out of the huddle into the line for their first offensive play. And Bowling Green goes uh, into the neutral zone. Stepping over was Hayden Finley, and there's uh, the uh, first uh, penalty of this ball game. Well, five-yard penalty on the first play isn't going to hurt you, but we'll hope that's not uh, representative of what's going to happen tonight. Bowling Green a little jumpy, Mm -hmm. ready to get after it on that first play. 11 to 57 to play here first corner. First and five for the Panthers. Very herky-jerky offense, and they get out to the outside, and uh, at the Jason corner, Pennywell. taken down, Pennewell, just shy of the, uh, or just uh, across the 45-yard line to the 46. 14 yards, and uh, first down for the yep. Panthers. Pennywell is their go-to guy. He leads them in rushing. Uh, Talton really is the breakaway guy from the, from the other tailback position out of this wing tee. Uh, but uh, Pennywell does all the tough running, and, and as I said, a good gain on his first uh, play from scrimmage. On the ground again. Pennywell. A little misdirection play, and he'll get one, maybe two yards out wow. near midfield. Late flag, too, it looks like. Hayden Finley, two-yard gain for the Panthers. Second down, eight. We'll see what they're going to call. Yeah, they, oh, they're, they're going to pick it up. They're going to yeah. pick it up, yeah. Two-yard game for Pennywell. Clock running, 11-14 to go here in the opening quarter. First drive of the ball game, no score. As we said, a lot of motion out of this wing tee. They've shifted out of their initial formation every drive play they'll so far. Try it to the near side, and they'll break through. To the near side, and he's going to go all the way down inside the 10 and knocked out near the five-yard line. Painter on the carry that time. 47 yards, well, well, they're going to mark it at the three, 49 yards on the run by Painter. So they wing back that time with the carry, and he takes it down to a first and goal for the Panthers. That misdirection out of the wing tee, they bit on Pennywell, and Painter had plenty of room out around the left end. Starks finally stopped him, and they'll go in for the score. Touchdown, Monroe City. 10.54 10.54 to play here in the opening quarter. That's number 24, Keaton Pennywell, to put uh, the Panthers up here in the early going. Well, they made that look easy. Uh, Bowler Green got caught out of the assignment, as we talked about, on the Painter run, and Pennywell punches it in from three yards out. Looks like they're going to go for two here in the early going. Ball spotted at the three. I don't think they kick extra points very often if at all. So a two-point conversion attempt here 
after the initial score of this ball game. And bouncing off and tackled for a loss is number 11, Talton. So 6 nothing our score. Just a minute to six into this ball game. Woo. A very efficient drive from Rose City. Bowling Green will get the ball when we come back on Eagle 102. Ingram Plumbing has always been known for its outstanding plumbing service. But did you know that Ingram's is also the largest retail plumbing supply store in the area? We carry Delta faucets, a complete line of Whirlpool tubs and showers, jacuzzi pumps, and many other specialty items. At Ingram Plumbing, we're ready to meet all your plumbing needs. I should know. I'm Bonnie Ingram, and I've worked there for over 50 years. Stop by Ingram Plumbing today, Highway 61 Bowling Green. High School Sports on KJFM is brought to you by Abel's Quick Shops, Mike's Tire and Service Center in all parts. You set it off air explosive. Uh, the two plays, the 14-yard run and then the uh, run by the, the wing back. Uh, 49 yards, yeah. 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 Well, let, let, let's see if Bowling Green's offense can answer. Uh, they're not necessarily a quick strike team like that. They're more of a – not that they don't have uh, quick strike capabilities because they do, but uh, uh, we'll see how they fare. And they kick it deep, and this one's going to be fielded around the 10-yard line. Is that uh, Cooper Keel? Now he's going to reverse field and get caught and brought back. Gave up a few yards after initially taking it out near the 30. Well, as we've talked uh, a lot this year, kick returning, uh, uh, you got to be fearless and you got to run hard and hope the hole opens. As soon as he put, the, put on the brakes and tried to change directions, the uh, pursuit was able to catch up to him. So it'll be first and 10 for the Bobcats from the 24-yard line, their own 24 with 10.44 to play here in the opening quarter. And Dylan Dalton brings the offense onto the field for the first time for Bowling Green. They're going to run it up the middle on first down and a gain of what, uh, about nine. Yeah, Bowen right up the gut out of his fullback position. Good positive yardage that time. Interesting they start with uh, Charlie Bowen, uh, the, the bruising back. Looks like they'll give him eight on the carry. Well, you got to be able to run the football, and then that will free up the passing game. So second and two from just inside the 30-yard line, and they'll go to Starks this time, and he's out near the first down. Interesting, the first two plays under center as well by Dalton. Starks will pick up, a, what, about three, it looks like, and yeah. get the first down. Across the 35 to the 36-yard line of the Bobcats. And the chance, the first down chant, uh, carries over from the home games. Good crowd here for the Bobcats. Yes, there is. Bowling Green traveled well. And Monroe City always has a good crowd at their games. Yes, they do. With a beautiful facility like this, how can you not? Ooh, isn't it, though? Inside handoff. And rumbling forward is Bowen for a gain of about uh, five. Well, if you think back to the Palmyra game, uh, Charlie Bowen has shown that he can run those tough yards up the middle. He gained five there. as. He was run until he was almost like a broke down horse in the Palmyra game and uh, did very well against that very good Palmyra defense. Bowling Green trying to control a little clock after that quick strike by Monroe City to start the game. Starks met as he makes his move and will stumble forward for a couple more. It's going to be third and two for the Bobcats. Man, you know, not that there's anything at all wrong with any of the football fields that we've been to this year. Boy, it's fun to be able to see the yard markers and the hash marks and on these AstroTurf field. This is the first uh, AstroTurf game we, that I've had this year. Mm -hmm. Third and two for the Bobcats. And off goes to Starks. He's hit. Will he make the first down? It's going to be close. I think he's going to be marked short, actually. Uh, about a half yard, maybe a full yard. Starks tiptoeing a little bit. Mm-hmm. Here in the early going. Let's see what the Bobcats do here on fourth and one from the 45. Well, it looks like they may go for it, and this is kind of a big deal here in the early portion of this game. Mm -hmm. You're going to man up and show which offensive line is going to control this game right here. Fourth and one for the Bobcats. Looks like they're setting up for a quarterback sneak. 
He backed up, but then makes it through and rumbles all the way across the 50 to the Monroe City 46. Yeah, a very nice nine-yard gain. Dalton did something that a lot of quarterbacks don't do. He didn't go right as the ball was snapped. He took a step back, let the offensive line get the push, and then kind of ran, ran, ran off the in the A-gap hole and picked up nine yards. So they convert the first fourth down of this ball game, fresh set, and into Monroe City territory for the first time. Rolling out, Dalton puts it in the air for the first time to Charlie Bowen on the near side, and he's forced out of bounds at the 41. It's a gain of six on the play, and the Bobcats starting to move upfield. First pass, first completion of the game by either club. Bowen a familiar target for Dalton out of the backfield. They'll give him five. Hayes on the stop for the Panthers. Clock running down to 7.22 to go in the first quarter. Bowling Green doesn't throw it a ton, but they can. Interesting, they're still under center. Haven't gone out of the shotgun yet. Hand off. Bowen Goes again. up the middle. Bowen, and he's got first down yardage and then a little bit more. Down to the 32-yard line, maybe the 31. It is the 31. And a fresh set for the Bobcats, trailing 6 nothing here with seven minutes to go. Ten yards on the carry for Bowen, doing the dirty work up the middle out of that fullback position. Well, this is what we talked about. You got a big offensive line, let them do their thing. And so far in this drive, it's working. Can they, can they punch it in, though? Handoff goes to Starks this time. Little stutter step to the near sideline. He's got what appears to be about eight yards and taken out on the near sideline. We've talked about we've talked about some games this year taking forever. Tonight's game might be a little different story. Everybody's mm -hmm. it's ground and pound so far. Looks like they gave Stark seven on that carry. Josiah Talton with the stop for Monroe City, and it's second and three. And flags or whistles before the snap. I think it's going to be a false start or maybe a timeout. No, nope, they're going to call timeout, yeah. Timeout, Monroe City, 619 to go, opening quarter. Monroe City leads Bowling Green 6-0. The Bobcats driving here in district semifinal action on Eagle 102. Here's one question that has no wrong answer. Are you going to choose the new Shell and Fuel Rewards card to be used at Shell stations or the Shell and Fuel Rewards MasterCard that can be used everywhere MasterCard is accepted? With both, you save 10 cents per gallon, up to 20 gallons every time you fill up. And you also earn 10% rebates on your first $1,200 in non-fuel purchases per year at Shell stations. See? You can't go wrong with either. Visit www.shell.us slash get rewards and apply today. At participating Shell stations only, terms and conditions apply. Eagle 102 Sports on KJFM is brought to you by Ingram Plumbing, Bowling Green Pharmacy, and Mid-America Auto and Towing. It'll be second and three for the Bobcats after the Monroe City timeout, 6-19 to go opening quarter. First timeout used by either side. Interesting timeout, actually. Mm -hmm. Trying to inspire his defensive troops as Bowling Green on the move. Timeout second down and three for Bowling Green. Charlie Bowen. Instead, they go to Starks, the fullback. And he's going to be across the 20 for the first down. And Bowling Green pretty much uh, running at will right now. Looks like he's going to pick up six. And they're in the red zone for the first time. First and 10 from the 19. Midway point of this first corner from Monroe City. Class 2 District 6 semifinal. First and 10, Bowling Green from the 19. Dalton still under center, and the handoff goes to Starks. He skips over, over man. Oh, good oh, reverse nice move, move, and brought in sound inside the 10. Looks like he's at about the six, maybe seven. Really good cutback move at about the 12 yard line. He takes it down to the seven, gain of 12. And now they're first and goal from the seven, as you said. Bowling Green looking to even this game up at six. First time inside the 10 yard line. And off goes to Starks. Jumps over a man and takes it inside the five to about the three. It'll be second and goal. See where they mark it. Maybe they'll mark it at the two. So they'll give him five. No, there are, you're right, the three. 
Holland on the stop. This side judge over here was going to mark it at the two. Bobcats trying to punch it in here at Langford Field. Beautiful Langford Field. Quarterback keeper, and did Dalton get in? He did. Touchdown, Bowling Green. Ties this game at six with the extra point yet to come. 4.53 to play here in the first quarter. That time Dalton went with the center. A little tougher running, but he was able to force his way in from three yards out. Nothing fancy about that drive. Just uh, <laughs> no. it, 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 ground and pound in your face. I'll try and kick the extra point to take the lead. Last week they had problems with this. Let's see if they've got it worked out. Good snap, good hold. Kick is good as well. Bowling Green takes a one-point lead. Both teams score on their opening possession. And we've got a ball game here in the semifinals of the Class 2 District 6 tournament on Eagle 102. Farmers, the crew at Mike's Tire and Service Center is here to serve you. They know the hours you put in, definitely not your typical 8 to 5, which makes it difficult to get that equipment in for service. Therefore, they offer on-the-farm tire repair. Call Mike's Tire and Service Center and they'll be happy to work with you to get you back to operation as usual. Hi folks, my name is Cody Kirkendall, Mike's Tire and Service Center, located on Business Highway 61 in Bowling Green. Mike's Tire and Service Center proudly supports all area farmers. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102 is brought to you by Community State Bank of Missouri, Family Drug, and Pike County Health Department, Home Health and Hospice. Well, Jim, tell us about Louisiana Mark Twain. A couple early scores. Uh, Louisiana scores at the 936 mark and leads 8 to nothing, but Mark Twain comes right back at the 643 mark with the uh, two point conversion failed, and Louisiana up 8 to 6. In the first quarter, Palmyra 14, Clark nothing. So. Everything underway here, and we'll try and keep up for you as we can. 7-6 Bowling Green, 4.53 to play here in the opening corner. Squib kick. Fielded by the up man, and he'll just take a seat at the 33-yard line. So not bad starting position for the Panthers. Bulig on the return. So no two kicks, no return yardage yet. Yeah, we talked about that. Uh, uh, boy, you just give them give good football teams pretty good field position by swift kicking it like that. But I guess they're afraid of what their kick coverage can handle. So Hayes brings the offense onto the field for the second time tonight. Both teams score on their opening possessions. And off. Goes up the middle, and they're just having a lot of trouble stopping that initial push. He, push, he takes it all the way down to the 40-yard line. Pennywell, just a tough runner. As they ran that off tackle, a little isolation run that time. Picked up eight. Second and two for the Panthers. They rush to the line again. That's part of their misdirection, even before they get to the line. Trying to get Bowling Green up on their tiptoes. They've drawn one penalty so far on the first play from scrimmage. Now they'll put a man in motion, and the motion man will get the handoff over on the far side. That's uh, Talton, and he's taken out of bounds in Bowling Green territory across the 35 of the Bobcats to the 34. That's Josiah Talton. And the receiver on that uh, end around. 4.01 to play in the opening quarter. And again, the Panthers in business. 21 on the run by Talton. Bowling Green needs to get those assignments shorted, or sorted out. Oh, yeah, the motion's really confusing them right now. Inside handoff this time, bouncing off a man. He is a big runner. Finally first brought down by Cooper Keel. Josh Talton's first carry. He'll pick up five, it looks like. Second and five from the Bobcat 36 yard line. So, what we thought might have been a defensive struggle so far, neither defense has been able to stop either offense. Not at all. Closest uh, either team got was. Pushing Bowling Green to a fourth down, which they converted. Rolling out, he's going to put it in the air for the first time, and this one is 
incomplete on the near side. Bulick was the intended target. Had a man open. He was underthrown just a little bit at about the 15-yard line. So it'll be third and five. So an interesting change of pace there. And now you, you've got a semi-tough third down play here. Well, you're in four down territory for sure, though. But Bowling Green needs to push him back, either no gain or a loss. Isn't going to happen. Inside handoff, he'll get, oh, a second push, and it's going to be close to a first down. It's going to be fourth and one. He runs very similar, Pennywell does, to Bowen. He doesn't go down on the first hit or first contact, spun out of that first contact, and as you said now, it's going to be fourth and one. Ryan Cordy on the stop for Bowling Green. We're under three minutes to go in the opening quarter. 7-6 Bobcats, big fourth down play coming up here for Monroe City. Hand off, and they've got the yard. Bouncing off a tackle, and again, that's number 24, Keaton Pennywell with the fourth down conversion. Looks like he'll pick up four on the carry. Good for the first down, and the drive continues. As the clock continues to run, we're down to 240 to play in the first quarter. Bowling Green leads seven to six. First and 10 from inside the 30 of the Bobcats. Hand off to Talton. He cuts it back up the field, and he'll get a yard, maybe two on first down. Yeah, they had him uh, corralled, if you will, in the backfield, but he was able to wiggle away and get some positive yardage, only one on the carry. Second and nine, two minutes to go here in the first quarter. However, that's the shortest gain on first down by Monroe City in this game so far. Got to take those positives where you can get them. Absolutely. On second and nine. Lots of motion this time, and a nice open field tackle that time Pennywell. on Pennywell. That was uh, Cooper Keel on the stop. Stopped him after a gain of five. It'll be third and four. On the tackle for Bowling Green, gain of five. See if the Bowling Green defense can hold here on third down. Ball is on the 20, looks like about the 22-yard line, or is that? Yeah, that's yep. right. Scoreboard says 27, threw me for a loop there for a second. It's third down regardless, third and four for the Panthers. And off comes to the near side this ah. time. Oh, he stacked up and dropped. Charlie Bowen, the first man there, got a little help from number 42, Clay Lazier. Painter tried to run that same play, went 49 yards the first time. This time he did. Now they're going to say he got back to the line of scrimmage. That's a favorable spot there. First penetration by the Bowling Green defense into the backfield with contact. So fourth and four. 45 seconds to go in the first quarter. And four for the Panthers. No game on the That would be nice to start the second quarter with the ball and a one-point lead. You need a stop here on fourth down and four. See what Monroe City draws up. Roll out to the far side, screen. pitch back to the near side on the screen. He's got the first down yardage and knocked out of bounds. Reception that time by Kelson Painter. Throwback screen to Painter. Fake the handoff to Painter first, rolled out and then passed it back across to Painter. And it's going to be first and 10 from the 14-yard line of the Bobcats. That was a well-drawn-out play. They sent everybody to the right side, rolled the quarterback that way, and snuck Painter out into the flat with a little screen action, and he was able to pick up the first down. They looked like they were going to try and run one more play, but that ain't going to happen. We've ended the first quarter. Monroe City knocking on the door, but they trail Bowling Green 7-6 to six after the first 12 minutes. Second uh, quarter action coming up after this from the Class 2 District 6 semifinals on Eagle 102. It's a great time to buy or sell a home. I'm Vicki Cadwalder, and I take pride in offering skills that make the process go smoothly from beginning to end. Even after closing, I enjoy staying in touch and being there to help you if you have any other needs or questions. During the process, I'll work closely with your lender and other professionals to make it as effortless as possible. I'm here with you every step of the way, so when you're ready to buy or sell, call me and we'll create a personalized plan just for you. Vicki Cadwalder Real Estate, loving our small town life. Bringing you all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth. Sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. Fast moving first quarter. 
That it was. Both teams score on their only full possession. Monroe City knocking on the door here on their second uh, offensive series of the game. Well, as we said during the, the uh, broadcast, up to this point, the defense hasn't held a whole lot. Uh, both teams have converted first downs uh, on their drives, and uh, it's been an offensive game, although it's all pretty much on the ground. A couple complete passes by each – or a single complete pass, I guess, by each club, but uh, mostly on the ground, and uh, both teams having success. Palmyra leading Clark County 14 to nothing in the early going there. Here it's 7 to 6 Bowling Green, but they need a stop here from the 14 yard line to keep uh, Monroe City in their rear view mirror. Monroe City driving. First and 10 for the Panthers. As we start the second quarter. First and 10. Inside handoff, not much there. Bowling Green stacks up. Charlie Bowen again was the first contact. He Pretty wrapped well. him up well. Yeah, it looks like he'll pick up one maybe. He had 42 rushing yards in the first quarter. Hmm. And he was only the second leading rusher. Yeah. That's Painter with the big 49-yard run uh, on the first uh, series of plays for Monroe City. Second and nine from the 13 for the Panthers. Bobcats. Starting to figure things out defensively a little bit. It's uh, Fenwell again, and uh, not much there for him. Yeah, tried to run him off left, left tackle that time. Good penetration by the defensive line and filled by the linebackers. Looks like he'll lose a half a yard. It'll be third and nine. Be something big if Bowling Green can keep them out of the end zone here. Definitely. Again, they're going to use all four downs. They're not going to try chip shot field goals or anything like that. Hayes runs to the sideline and gets the play. Third and nine. Let's see what kind of misdirection they come up with, and then flags come out, and the play clock was at zero. They'll take a timeout to beat that. Their second charge timeout. 10.35 to go in the second corner. Bowling Green holding on to that 7-6 lead here at Monroe City on Eagle 102. This is Kyle Scherter, System Vice President at Community State Bank of Missouri. We offer a variety of loans to meet your needs. Whether you're looking for a conventional loan or a HELOC or an FHA, VA, or USDA loan, give us a call. We have some of the best rates around. Community State Bank of Missouri, your hometown community bank, 1887, member FDIC, equal housing lender. High School Sports on KJFM is brought to you by Pike County Mutual Insurance, Browns Processing, and Bank of Louisiana. Third and nine for Monroe City after the timeout. 10.35 to go here in the first half of this ball game. District semifinals of the Class 2 District 6 tournament. Into the first quarter from Macon, Centre and Southern Boone. No score. Bobcats. Looking for a stop to set up a long fourth down play. South Callaway and Paris tied at six. Motion. Roll out. He puts it in the air to the end zone. It is oh, knocked away. Man, Good defense. defense. I think that was Starks and Cordy on the coverage. I think it was Cordy that got the hand on yeah, it. Yeah, Cordy made up a lot of ground because he was beat in the corner pattern. And really made up some ground on a high lob pass from Hayes and was able to deflect it at the last minute. It's fourth down. 10.29 to go. Clock stops on the incompletion. And we'll see what the Panthers go to here on fourth down. Man, that was a good defensive play because mm -hmm. he was beat. Uh, Cordy, with a little height, was able to get back and swat it down. A little height, little jumping ability as well. He laid out for that one. Handoff comes to the near side on the reverse, and he's going to be brought down. That's a stop for the Bobcats on Talton, and a turnover on downs, and this Bowling Green defense is pumped up. And that's going to be a loss of about, what are they going to mark it? Uh, 16. 21 and 16, so a loss of three. Great pursuit that time by the Bobcat defense. There was a heap of Bobcats Ooh, there. Wasn't there, though? 
I think you said it right. Bowling Green defense seemingly starting to find their footing. Offense back on the field from the 16-yard line. Or Still going under center. Haven't seen the shotgun yet. They'll give to Starks on first down. He's, he's got, got some, some room. room. Stutter step and takes it up across the 30. That's a gain of about 13 and a first down for the Bobcats. Yeah, they'll mark it. You're right, right exactly at the 13, or at the 30, I should say. Call it 14 on the game. Gives him 50 yards on the ground so far tonight. Clock running down to 10 minutes to go in the first half. 7-6 Bobcats after that defensive stop. First and 10 from the 30. Inside handoff this time to Bowen. Spins Ooh. off a tackle across the 40. Another oh, first down for the Bobcats. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. Big 13-yard. Looks like they may give him 14 on the carry. Looking like looking like a big-time tailback with that spin uh -huh. move, buddy. Little Barry Sanders in him. <laughs> of course, Barry's probably retired uh, yeah, before he was born. Yeah. <laughs> I would guess so. <laughs> They may not even know who Barry Sanders is. What are you talking ah, about? Ah, there's YouTube clips. <laughs> First and 10 from the 44 for the Bobcats. Starks hit at the line, uh, scrimmage marker and uh, falls forward for a gain of one. It's going to be second and nine. Yeah, he was hit immediately, had a little stutter step that time, and Pursuit was able to get there. 9.17 to go. Bowling Green up 7-6. Inching closer to midfield. Their own 45, second and nine. Man, really interesting change in philosophy offensively. They've gone from the spread almost predominantly all year and haven't gone out of the shotgun until now. For the first time, and it's going to be a quarterback keeper for Dalton, and he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and fall forward for one. Yeah, not much running room there. Ran, kind of ran that little option thing they try and run. He holds the handoff until he can read the, te the uh, left end. And that time the linebackers came and finished him off before he could get freed up. Bulig on the stop for the Panthers. Clock running down to eight and a half to go in the half. Third and a long eight for the Bobcats. Back under center here is Dalton. And he fakes the handoff, passes to the near side. It's caught. That's going to be enough for the first down into Monroe City territory. Complete. Caught by Niemeyer. Yeah, Owen Niemeyer on the reception on the near sideline. Going to give him 13 on the reception. However, he did the old mic drop with the football and got a look at from the official. You might want to throw it to the official. Yeah. <laughs> Four minutes gone here in the second quarter of this ball game. Clock continues to run, and the Bobcats across midfield to the 42 of the Panthers. Another well-drawn-out play, little play-action pass, and Dalton rolls out. Now we've got a whistle. We're going to have a Bowling Green timeout maybe. Their first charge, 7.47 to go in the first half of this ball game. Bobcats 7, Panthers 6 on Eagle 102. As many as 50% of people don't take their medication as prescribed. Some never even fill their prescription, even if they don't feel well. Missing or not taking medication can be deadly. For questions about medication, your local HealthMart Pharmacy is here to help. For fast, friendly service and affordable prices every day, visit your local HealthMart Pharmacy, Bowling Green Pharmacy, located right on the square at 8 North Court in Bowling Green. Eagle 102 Sports on KJFM is brought to you by People's Bank and Trust, County Market in Louisiana, and Bowling Green Insurance. Down the road and center, it's the Louisiana Bulldogs leading the Mark Twain Tigers 16-6 with three minutes to go in the first quarter. Well, they met, what, a couple of weeks ago, and Mark Twain won that game. Louisiana felt like they had a chance to win that. Louisiana's problem all year has been defense. We'll see if they can hold as the game continues there from uh, Mark Twain. First and, 10 for First and 10 for the Bobcats after the timeout. And off comes the near side, and Starks is dropped for a loss of two on the play. 
first negative run for the Bulldogs, or Bulldogs, got them on my brain now, by the Bobcats tonight. And so now they'll be behind the chains for the first time. Second and 12 for Bowling Green. Center comes to the line. Now they'll break the huddle. The rest of the team joins him. And Dalton will roll out. He'll take off and put his head down and crash through a tackle for a gain of about seven. It's going to be third and about five. Yeah, we'll have to see where they mark it. Monroe City playing straight up man on the outside. Eh, going to give him five. Give him five. So third and seven. And Ball he, moves across the 40 to the 39. Yeah, he was looking for uh, Cordy, I think, across the middle, but pretty good coverage that time by Monroe City. In the shotgun that time, and he'll fall forward. It's going to bring up fourth and about four after a gain of three yards. Dalton on the straight carry that time. Going to give him what? To two? Three. Yeah, three. Give him three, I guess. So a big fourth down for the Bobcat offense. They took over after a turnover on downs inside the 10-yard line. Midway point of the second quarter in the semifinals of district. Twins Fort. to the left that time. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Rolls out. Does Dalton. Puts it in the air, and it is caught. First down, Bobcats across the 25 same play, same result. And Emeyer, sure-handed tonight, actually gets into the 26-yard line, but a fresh set for the Bobcats. Their second uh, fourth down conversion, they're two for two. Ten yards on the catch and pass and catch. That play seemed to work so far. Mm-hmm. On first and 10, it's Starks on the carry. Trying to find some room, tiptoeing around, and he'll make it across the line of scrimmage for a gain of one. It'll be second and nine. Yeah, he was hit immediately on that le runoff of left tackle. Uh, looks, like, eh, looks like they maybe gave him two. Pretty tough running inside. Haven't heard from Bowen for a while. No, we haven't. What do you think of this? Uh, game time temperature is around 65 degrees. Yeah, who, what is this, November 7th? We're it usually is. in parkas and freezing to death, and this is like for spring football. Uh-huh. Quarterback keeps it. He'll go up the middle for a gain of a couple. Saw some space that time, and uh, the linebacker closed rather quickly. Still sets up a manageable third and five. Six, Dalton on the carry. Give him three on the carry. 65, Masterson. Masterson on the stop for Pan uh, the Panthers. They're in four down territory, of course. Four and a half minutes to play. They lead to the Bobcats seven to six. Bobcats scored on their only possession. This is their second. And here's Bowen right on cue. And he's got first down yardage inside the 10 to the, about the five yard line. It's going to be yes. first and goal for the Bobcats. Yes, it was. 16 yards for Charlie Bowen. They'll stop him at the six officially. Hayes in on the stop, but not until the Bobcats convert. Coaching staff's right next door to us. Maybe they were listening, huh? <laughs> I don't think that's soundproof glass. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it is or isn't, I'm very confident they're not paying nope. attention to us at all. <laughs> First and goal from the six. Bowen and Starks in the backfield behind Dylan Dalton. It's going to be a give to Starks to the near side, and he's in. Touchdown, Bobcats. They go ahead 13 to six. Six-yard run by Starks gives him 57 yards on the ground for the game. Went in with all out being touched almost. If he was touched, he didn't feel it. 3.37, the time of the touchdown left here in the first half. They'll try and kick the extra point again. Kicking is probably even nice on this field. And this one is up, and it is good. 
Angled a little bit to the far side, but the Bobcats add to their lead. It's now 14 to six, 337 to go in the first half on Eagle 102. Need a little good news in your life? Well, here's the deal. State Farm has new lower car insurance rates in Missouri, so you can now get the service and convenience of State Farm agent Cindy Blaylock at an even better price. That's right. State Farm can help you save more cash and get the good neighbor service you deserve. It's the real deal for car insurance. I'm State Farm agent Cindy Blaylock, and I'm ready to help you save. Call me today at 573-754-5575 or visit us in Louisiana, just a block up from the river. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102 is brought to you by Cellular and Satellite Center, the Mercantile Bank, and Bowling Green Tractor. After one, Louisiana leads Mark Twain 16 to 14, so the difference in that one is a two-point conversion. A couple other scores for you. At Montgomery County, after being down, has come back and taken a 15-14 lead over North Callaway. Palmyra leads Clark 20 to nothing, and that's in the second. And uh, Southern Boone and Centralia are tied at six. Short return out to the 30 for Monroe City, and I think I heard Palmyra up 28 nothing now. Oh, they score another one. So what do you get, about three on that return? First positive yardage, if you want to call it that. <laughs> First time they haven't just sat down or knelt down. <laughs> exactly. On a return tonight. But again, pretty good field position from the 30 for Monroe City. But you only have three and a half minutes. Before halftime, Bowling Green to get the ball to start the second half. Monroe City, only their third offensive series, direct snap that time. And did the ball come out? I don't know. I don't believe so. I think it was Pennywell on the carry right up the gut again. One yard gain. As his last three carries have been one, zero, and one. So have they figured him out? That's the question. Clay Lazier on the stop. Three minutes to go in the half clock running. You're at your own 31-yard line. Second and nine for the Panther offense. Gave us to Pennywell. And he's tripped up and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, actually that was Painter on the carry yep. that time. And he's going to lose three, three, yeah, about three yards. Third and 12. A little end around, if you will. Jet sweep. Uh, nothing doing that time. So, Painter goes backward. 2.25 to go. They have two timeouts remaining. Bowling Green has three. You can get a stop here. Whew. Out of Roll the shotgun out. for the first time. Puts it in the air to the near side. It's caught shy of the 40, and uh, it's going to be shy of the first down marker, too. A gain of about 10. It's going to be fourth and three. Bulig on the reception. Going to give him uh, about 10 on the catch. You say it was Bulig. Yep. His first catch of the night, and it'll be fourth and two. And they're going to go for it deep in their own end. Or well, not deep in their own end, from their own 38, I should say. This is pretty big. 2.05 to play in the half. Clock stopped as he went out of bounds. Now they'll wind it, and he's got first down yardage. To the near side, and he's broke it. All the way, he's going to go. Tries to reverse, and he's going to score. Fourth down conversion goes for a 60-yard touchdown. Oh, my goodness. Man, looked like there was a big hold on the cornerback, uh, too. Woo. That goes on call. No flags on the play, and it's a two-point game with the two-point conversion yet to come. Minute 53 to go here in the first half. Wow. He showed some speed when he got in the opening, didn't he? Yes, he did. All right, to try and tie the game on the two-point try. Inside handoff, and he's in. Two-point conversion, good. We're tied at 14 here late in the first half, minute 53 to play. Bowling Green will get the ball back when we come back on Eagle 102. 
Your 401k is likely one of your most important assets, but it's only one part of a comprehensive retirement strategy. Edward Jones can help you understand how your retirement assets fit into your entire retirement picture so you can work toward meeting your unique retirement goals. Contact me, Kayla Caldwell, your Edward Jones Financial Advisor at 2604 Georgia Street in Louisiana. Edward Jones, Making Sense of Investing, member SIPC. The KJFM is brought to you by Vicki Cadwallader, Real Estate and Perkins Electrical Service. What a run, 62 Ooh. yards for a game-tying touchdown after the two-point conversion. 14 all, minute 53 to go in the half. If you want to answer, that's kind of the way to do it, isn't it? Uh-huh. <laughs> Mercy. Talton showed some real speed once he got around the end. About the 50-yard line, you could tell there wasn't going to be anybody catch him, it didn't look like. It's nice to have breakaway speed, isn't it? Wouldn't know. <laughs> I don't remember. Ball. Muffed. It's on the oh, ground, and Monroe no. City has it. Oh, my goodness. That is huge. Oh, mercy. Now the Bobcats defense has to come right back on on the field. Mercy, mercy, mercy. It hit him in the chest. He fumbled it. Instead of trying to cover it, he tried to pick it up, and it squirted away from him, and Rose City recovers on the Bowling Green 23-yard line. Whoa, that's a big swing in the game. Yeah, minute 49 you have to work with. Plenty of time. You got one timeout left. Hand off on first down. Stutter step, that's Talton again. He's dropped inside the 20 to about the 16. Yeah. And Talton is the answer right now for Monroe right, City. Right, out of the tailback position. Picks up another 12 there. And all of a sudden, Bowling Green figured out Pennywell, but now Talton's finding a lot of running room. And that's what uh, this Monroe City offense can do to you. So many options for a ground attack. Minute 25 to go. Up the middle and stumbling forward is number 24, Pennywell. Gets a few. Actually gets about seven, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Starks finally stopped a minute 10 to go. Officially give him six. It's at the 11-yard line. Plenty of time, and Rose still has a timeout. We're at one minute in the half. Hand off. Near side, still tiptoeing and brought down. That was Talton on the carry. He stayed in bounds as well. Clock still running down to 45 seconds, and now he's injured. And that'll stop the clock at 44 seconds. Looks like they're going to mark him for a loss, maybe, of a yard. He'll roll off the field and now walk off under his own power, and it looks like an arm injury, upper body. Maybe Man. arm or shoulder. Hard to speculate. The trainers will look at him on the near sideline. The ref says let's get back to business. With 45 seconds to go, they wind the clock. Down to 40. Rush to the line. 32 seconds to go. Off tackle and brought down. Short of the first down, it's going to be fourth down. We're down to 22 seconds to go. They're going to get. They're going to run one play and save the timeout. Mm. 15 seconds on the clock. They go to the air here. Well, it's fourth down. They have to. Now they'll burn the timeout. Decided that they didn't want to risk that fourth down play with 10 seconds to go. 10.9 to be exact. 14 all. Big play in this ball game as the first half Isn't coming to a close. We'll take a quick break. Come back with more on Eagle 102. Founded in 2000, Sparks Maintenance Contracting out of Bowling Green has since been performing industrial maintenance nationwide and plans to continue growing. Sparks Maintenance Contracting, attention to detail and compassion are only some of the many things that separate them from other competitors. Teamwork is the key to success in business and in sports. Best wishes to all the area teams from Sparks Maintenance Contracting, proudly serving America. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102 is brought to you by State Farm Insurance, Cindy Blaylock, Young Enterprises Incorporated, and Pike County Memorial Hospital. 
This is a, a big point in this ball game. Most likely the final play of the first half. It's a fourth and long three for Monroe City just outside the 10 yard line. Rolling out, puts it in the air. It is caught. Did he stay in? Touchdown. Touchdown Monroe City with five seconds to go. Bueller. 12 yard reception. Great catch in the corner of the end zone. And what a, a swing in this ball game. Without a doubt. Wow. Well, we talked about it in the pregame. Can't cough up the football. Two plays are the difference in this ball game right now. The long run to tie it up. And he is rolling off. And I did he get in? No. No good on the two-point conversion. So it remains a six-point game. Five seconds to go in the half. But you had the long run by Talton to tie the game. And then on the next play, the muffed uh, kickoff. Yeah, and you can throw in the long run by Painter of 49 yards on their first drive. Three big plays in this game, and that's how Monroe City leads it 20 to 14. Five seconds to go in the first half. We'll keep it here. The Eagle 102 halftime is coming up. Most likely uh, right after the uh, kickoff here, but Bowling Green will have the ball to start the second half. That would have been another thing. Bowling Green, you know, if they could have gotten that kickoff and uh, done something, they would have had back-to-back -back possessions instead unless you run back this kickoff. Pretty big, pretty big deal, no question. You cost yourself a lot of momentum. It was Monroe City that struck first, leading six to nothing on their first drive. Bowling Green scored the next two to take a 14 to six lead. A long touchdown by Talton, and a two point conversion tied the game. Muffed kickoff, touchdown with five seconds to go. Two point conversion, no good. It's 20 to 14 Monroe City. And I just summed up the first half before we got to halftime. He most certainly did. <laughs> <laughs> now what are we going to talk about? Got that on tape. It's a short kick and brought down at midfield is the up man, Hayden Finley. And Bowling Green will have 1.4 seconds to go. And most likely they'll take a knee to end this first half. How about the fake to take a knee and throw it deep? How about that one? Oh, going uh, with Peyton Manning on that, huh? <laughs> From the Bobcat 46, 1.4 on the clock. Heck, that's not a really uh, inconceivable throw for Dylan Dalton. No, I mean, you could throw a Hail Mary. <laughs> Crazier things have happened, uh -huh. right? Uh-huh. Inside handoff instead to the near side. And Bowen is brought down across the 45 to the 41 yard line and that's the end of the first half. 20 to 14, the Monroe City Panthers, the number three seed lead the two, or uh, the two seed uh, Panthers lead the three seed Bowling Green Bobcats. And we'll be back with the halftime show after this on Eagle 102. The Eagle 102 Halftime Report is coming up, brought to you by Cellular and Satellite Center in Bowling Green. Cellular and Satellite Center is the only stop you need to make when it comes to satellite providers, offering direct TV and dish network along with antenna installs. Wait, there's more. They also offer several options for internet service with Viasat, HughesNet, and AT&T. Hold on, there's still more. They can also do security system installations, have TVs and stocks, mounts, and cables. Now, a special message from Matthew Niemeyer himself. If you call an 800 number and they say we will be the local installer, they are wrong. Contact Matthew at Sailor and Satellite Center in Bowling Green, your local authorized dealer. At Craig Bowen CPA, they guide their clients through a full range of tax planning and preparation decisions with strategies that minimize your tax liabilities, maximize your cash flow, and keep you on track to your financial goal. Craig Bowen CPA in Bowling Green encourages everyone to support their favorite high school sports team this season. Now more than ever, let your team know they have your full support. Craig Bowen CPA on the square in Bowling Green. 
Lynn's Heritage House in Louisiana offers affordable, home-like senior living, enabling your loved one the independence that they want and the services that they need. Staffed 24 hours a day with low resident-to-staff ratio, rest assured Lynn's Heritage House provides peace of mind for you and those you love. So if you or someone you know is ready for a retirement home or need care from a hospital stay or surgery, call Lynn's Heritage House to set up a tour and visit soon. Phone 754-4020 or visit 800 Kelly Lane in Louisiana. Hear all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth, sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. It's now time for the Eagle 102 halftime report on KJFM, sponsored by Cellular and Satellite Center in Bowling Green. What a first half of football. We've seen about everything. 20 to 14 of the two seed Monroe City Panthers lead the three seed Bowling Green Bobcats. And uh, we said the keys in keys to the game, uh, limit your mistakes. Uh, don't let the moment be bigger. Um, and Bowling Green made a couple of mistakes, uh, both in coverage and uh, on that kickoff, and find themselves behind by six points after two quarters. Yeah, just when you think uh, Bowling Green's really figured it out defensively, they let Talton get away and, and ran for a long 50, what was it? 62-yard touchdown run. And then on the ensuing kickoff, uh, unable to corral it, fumbled it, gave it back to Monroe deep in their own territory, uh, deep in Bowling Green's territory. Monroe not able to convert, and uh, you know it's pretty much a penalty-free game. Only one, only one flag in the entire entire game, which is nearly impossible to believe. But and that uh, was on the uh, first play from scrimmage. Exactly, exactly. So both teams have played clean, except for that big fumble that gave uh, Monroe City the football. And as you said, uh, at, towards the end of the half, Bowling Green gets that ball. Whether they run it anywhere or not, it's irrelevant. They get the ball and then and they finish out the half. Whether they score or not is irrelevant because mm-hmm. they're going to get the ball back to start the second half. Now they're going to still get it back to start the second half, but they're trailing by. Yeah, the momentum six. isn't there. It's it's turned. Uh, I mean, you look at the statistics. It's it's pretty even. Uh, Bowling Green's got 169 yards on the ground, 28 through the air. Dalton's three for three, 15 return yards. Uh, one penalty for five yards, 212 total offense. For Monroe City, 173 on the ground, 30 through the air on three for five passing by Hayes. Three return yards for 206 total and no penalties and the big one turnover by Bowling Green. All right. That uh, pretty much uh, tells the story of the first half so far. Very quick moving uh, first half. Yeah, that it was. We started at 6.59 and it's 7.55 right now. Yeah, that is uh, that is a efficient half of football for sure. And that's uh, pretty much a key. I, I think we had, what, one or two incomplete passes the entire first half. Two. Uh, two is all. And uh, we did have four, four timeouts called in the first half. But, uh, yeah, brisk brisk moving first, first uh, half of action. All right, Mark Twain has taken the lead over Louisiana at uh, center in the uh, semifinals of the uh, Class 1 District 2 tournament. Uh, that's the two-seed Mark Twain leading the six-seed uh, Louisiana Bulldogs, 20-16, to 16, uh, getting into the late stages of the first half in that one. We'll check around, find you some more scores, and update you on what's going on here in the uh, second week of district play in the state of Missouri on Eagle 102. Cellular and Satellite Center is the only stop you need to make when it comes to satellite providers, offering direct TV and dish network along with antenna installs. Wait, there's more. They also offer several options for internet service with Viasat, HughesNet, and AT&T. Hold on, there's still more. They can also do security system installations, have TVs and stocks, mounts, and cables. Now a special message from Matthew Niemeyer himself. If you call an 800 number and they say we will be the local installer, they are wrong. Contact Matthew at Sailor and Satellite Center in Bowling Green, your local authorized dealer. Bowling Green Ready Mix and Kearns Construction, your high-quality one-two punch to knock out tough building projects. Bowling Green Ready Mix for all your concrete and concrete supplies and the only plant locally owned and operated and Kearns Construction for new homes, remodeling jobs, repair work, you name it, and Ed will tackle it. Just call 573-324-3433 and let the friendly, knowledgeable staff at Bowling Green Ready Mix and Kearns Construction Company go to work for you. 
When it comes to buying or selling real estate, you can count on the professionals at Penrod Real Estate in Louisiana. Serving Pike County and surrounding areas, Penrod Real Estate can find buyers for your home or property and can also assist in helping you find the home of your dreams. Residential or commercial, the friendly folks at Penrod Real Estate invite you to reach out if you're in need of help in any area of the real estate process. Phone 754-6922 or visit the office at 618 Georgia in Louisiana. Penrod Real Estate looks forward to serving you. The area's home improvement and rental equipment headquarters is La Crosse Lumber Company in Bowling Green. Check out great rates on rental equipment and save lots of money. La Crosse Lumber Company in Bowling Green carries a large inventory of equipment to make that tough job easier for the do-it-yourselfer. All your building supplies plus blueprint service available and ask about free delivery. The oldest, most reliable lumber and hardware company in the Midwest since 1873. La Crosse Lumber Company, 1014 West Adams in Bowling Green. Phone 324-5431. High School Sports on KJFM is brought to you by Abel's Quick Shops, Mike's Tire and Service Center in all parts. We're at the half here at Monroe City. The Panthers lead the Bowling Green Bobcats 20-14. Some other scores from around the region. Hannibal leading Mexico 27 to nothing. Uh, Mexico's quarterback uh one of their top defensive players and one of their wide wide receivers are out for that game wow uh still 28 nothing palmyra leading clark county uh we mentioned the uh mark twain louisiana score at uh 20 to 16 in favor of um, the mark twain tigers over the bulldogs north Callaway's leading montgomery county 27 24 that was uh, with about five minutes to go in the half and I saw a South Callaway score. They lead 14-6 uh, to six over, what is that, Paris? That is correct. And the 1-5 uh, matchup from uh, Class 1 District 2. That's the other game in the district uh, that Louisiana and Mark Twain are in. So Blair Oaks is beating Boonville 40 to nothing. Holy Ooh. smokes. <laughs> That's in the first half still. Those are uh, – Scores like the opening week of uh, <laughs> yeah, districts, no but uh, a lot of you know, one and two seeds had uh, yeah. the first week off. Including Blair uh, Oaks is kind of a juggernaut, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they've, always they've, are. Yeah, they've had good football down there for, for years. Here it's 20 to 14. Uh, the Panthers leading the uh, Bobcats. And uh, like we said, it, it's come down to, you know, three or four plays over the first 24 minutes that have uh, the Panthers ahead and with all the momentum in the world. Well, yeah, statistically uh, it's close, but Bowling Green actually has the edge statistically. Uh, but a busted assignment, a turnover, and you look up at the scoreboard and all of a sudden instead of being up, you're down. And, and uh, so they'll, they'll be able to uh, have to regroup. Uh, you know, it's on the road. They know they can play. You know, they can play with Monroe City. In fact, they can move the ball on Monroe City. And one thing we really didn't lean on too much was that touchdown pass. That was fourth down. Yes, it was. Fourth down with 10.9 seconds to go, and it was fourth and about five, uh-huh. and they throw the touchdown pass. So the defense showed even after the turnover they had stopped Monroe City and got them to a fourth down, but a nice play-action pass, and Buellig made a really good catch in the right corner of the end zone uh, for the touchdown. Now, let's look at the flip side uh, of that. There was another play. It wasn't at the corner of the end zone, but uh, another throw to the end zone on an earlier drive that uh, Bowling Green was able to break up, uh, and uh, it it took a good play by uh, Cordy, I believe. Yeah, and, in fact, it was the same play. (laughs) Yeah. The second time they didn't get there in time. Well, they were there. Uh, Buellig made a nice catch, and it was – you know, he was in the very – deep corner of the end zone and and he had had to hang on to it there's a lot of a lot of things he did right there uh, to, to secure the football and, and and then of course bowling green held him out on the two-point conversion so they only trailed by six so this game's a long way from being over yeah cordy doesn't make that play it could be 28 or more right to to you know uh seven at this point because uh, they i don't know if they uh they score following a touchdown uh at that point of the uh, first half so um this game could be a lot different. Uh, it just comes down to four or five plays, like we said. Uh, about five minutes to go before we start to the second half. We'll talk about what the uh, Bobcats can uh, do to stop this Monroe City uh, run attack when we come back on Eagle 102. 
Show off your school pride today with the Bulldog Debit Card from Bank of Louisiana. Every time you use your Bulldog Debit Card, Bank of Louisiana will make a donation to the Louisiana School District. Stop by the bank today and get your new Bulldog Debit Card so you can start supporting the teachers and students with every swipe. The Bulldog Debit Card from Bank of Louisiana. Member FDIC. This is Tracy Brookshire, Marketing Coordinator and Public Information Officer for Pike County Health Department Home Health and Hospice here in Missouri. We are doing our best to keep our community informed as much as possible regarding how the COVID-19 pandemic is affecting our county. Visit our dedicated COVID-19 page on our website at pikecountyhealth.org for resources, latest news, updated case counts, and a contact form for questions and concerns specifically related to the virus. Visit our website to subscribe to our PCHD e-news and be the first to know about any updates and resources we have to offer in our communications. Stay safe out there, Pike County. Your health is our priority, and together we will get through this concerning time. Bowling Green Insurance is here to serve all your insurance needs. Bowling Green Insurance offers companies to cover your farm, home, auto, and crop needs. Call Fred or Jackie today to get a customized quote that will fit you and your budget. Bowling Green Insurance is an independent insurance agency. That means they can offer several companies to fit you. Give Bowling Green Insurance a call today to get a quote. 573-324-5762 or 573-324-CROP. Eagle 102 Sports on KJFM is brought to you by Ingram Plumbing, Bowling Green Pharmacy, and Mid-America Auto and Towing. Two quarters in the books here in the district semifinals, Class 2 District 6 tournament, and Monroe City leading Bowling Green 20-14 to uh, 14 after two quarters. Um, it seemed like the Bobcats had figured out uh, Pennywell uh, there in the uh, around the, the change of quarter between the first and the second, uh, but then uh, you get Talton. Uh, they've got about three different changes of pace. They can give you about five different looks in their, their running game, and if all else fails... Um, they've got Hayes who can throw throw the ball uh, fairly well, as uh, evidenced on that uh, that touchdown pass. Well, and interestingly enough, Hayes hadn't run the ball at all tonight. No, he hasn't. He can run the football. Uh, you know, they'll run that the little option out of that wing T. They'll fake the handoff to Pennywell, and and get it to uh, Talton, which went for 62 yards for a touchdown. So my guess is in the Bowling Green locker room right now, it's it's a questioning your manhood. You, this second half, you got to whip the guy in front of you, stay on your assignment, and everything will be fine. We know we can play with him. We've been able to stop him, in, you know, in the middle. Now you got to do assign, play assignment defensive football, and somebody, whoever's got Talton, has got to whip their guy and tackle Talton before he gets free. And I'm guessing that's going to be the conversation because, really, there's not a whole lot to change. Offensively, they've moved the football. Mm-hmm. Uh been able to score. They've made their – you know, we talked last week they were having so much of a problem with the extra points, knock on wood. So far that, that's been good, and we talked how important that might be mm-hmm. in a close game. And right now it's very important because it's a, you only have a, a six-point deficit. So they, they don't have to change a whole lot. It's just you gotta you got to do your job defensively and hang on to the football. Yeah, hang definitely, football. in all three phases. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, you think the uh, Talton entry there at the end of the first half prior to the touchdown, do you think that's gamesmanship uh, trying to, to stop the clock there? Or uh, what do you see in that? Uh, do you think he'll be no, 100% in the no, second half? No, you know, because they went ahead and called a timeout. Okay. You know, and uh, so I, I, they, they had uh, stopped him in bounds, and then you actually made a comment. They just kind of got him off the field. He's already cranked the clock. Uh, so then they had to call the timeout, uh, and those Talton guys—I I don't know the boys themselves, but I, I know their their father. And, uh, I don't know that he he would uh, advocate playing games like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're not hurt, get up. <laughs> now, situational. Now, you know, now, if, now, you're, now, if you're being smart, now, I think- if, you're, if you're in a college game or in the pro game and you're on TV and you're going to get a little extra TV time, you act like you got a little arm injury. Yeah, then I'd go with it. Or you got the great SEC fall. If you've seen that, the guy just falls down. You know, in the middle of nobody, and acts like he's hurt to stop the clock. But I don't think that was the case here tonight. All right, twenty to fourteen <laughs> after two quarters. The team's uh, coming back on the field right now. Bowling Green will get the ball to start the second half. When we return here in the semifinals of the Class Two District Six football tournament on Eagle One Hundred Two. 
Bowling Green Tractor wants to change the way you think about yard work with their Ego 56-volt arc lithium battery-powered lawnmowers, weed eaters, blowers, trimmers, and chainsaws. At Bowling Green Tractor, you can walk in and see for yourself just how easy these products are to handle. So easy, anyone can use them. Once you try it, you'll just have to buy it. Stop by Bowling Green Tractor to see how easy yard work can be. Bowling Green Tractor, your home for ego. Power beyond belief. Cellular and Satellite Center is the only stop you need to make when it comes to satellite providers, offering direct TV and dish network along with antenna installs. Wait, there's more. They also offer several options for internet service with Viasat, HughesNet, and AT&T. Hold on, there's still more. They can also do security system installations, have TVs and stocks, mounts, and cables. Now a special message from Matthew Niemeyer himself. If you call an 800 number and they say we will be the local installer, they are wrong. Contact Matthew at Sailor and Satellite Center in Bowling Green, your local authorized dealer. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102 is brought to you by Community State Bank of Missouri, Family Drug, and Pike County Health Department, Home Health and Hospice. All right, it's me. Uh, some loose ends to, to tie up. Uh, congratulations to the Bowling Green Boys uh, cross-country team. They finished uh, 12th. Monroe City just finished 12th in their cross-country state meet today. Rachel Klott uh, uh, had a nice run as a freshman for the uh, Bowling Green girls over at uh, State. And uh, the uh, Sullivan uh, softball team uh, that uh, ended Bowling Green season, they did win uh, state last fr- or Thursday uh, by a 2-1 score. Uh, that's the school's first uh, team championship in, in school history in any sport. So congratulations to uh, Sullivan as they beat Savannah 2-1. to one. And they just didn't give up any runs. I no. Mean, uh, we talked about coming into the uh, Bowling Green game. They'd had two back-to-back shutouts. They gave up a single run to – to Bowling Green and a single run to, or two runs, I guess it was three to two to Savannah. Oh, that's right, yeah. And uh, but yeah, you don't. And that in softball, if you don't give up any runs, it's uh, you, you're you're not going to lose. No, no. <laughs> it may take you a while to win. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but uh, yeah, congratulations to Selma. Congratulations to the Bowling Green girls. Oh, yeah. they, they had a Definitely. good year. They've got uh, they've got a lot of talent coming back next year, and so they'll they'll have. Uh, be looking forward to, to positive things in 2021. Now the question for you is: Is we're you know, we're a, what about three weeks from high school basketball? Uh-huh. Will we play? That is uh, the the question. That is the question in Missouri. That is the question in Illinois. Well, Illinois, the question is starting to shrink a little bit because uh, the IHSA is. And the governor are going at it right now. Uh-huh. I, I can almost guarantee you who's going to win that battle. Because <laughs> when the governor says, you don't get any state funding if you defy my uh, lockdown rules, that will be the end of high school uh, uh, basketball in Illinois. Of course, they didn't play any football in Illinois this year. Uh-huh. They did play golf and ran cross country. I think it's the only two sports, the only two fall sports uh, that were that took place in Illinois, uh, and so yeah, the big question is: uh, Will there will there be football anywhere? Basketball, or, or yeah. basketball, I should say anywhere. Yeah, we're going to have football uh, anywhere this year, and uh, we're not too far from finding out. I know the middle schools are playing right now uh, around our area. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I've seen uh, my my Facebook feed has been full of pictures so far. Yeah, yeah, a lot of. A lot of stuff going on, and uh, you, you got to give kudos to the administrations and, and the health departments for making it possible for them to play here in Missouri. All right, we're ready for second half action. Monroe City will be kicking off to Bowling Green. The Panthers hold a 20 to 14 lead over the Bobcats. Bowling, Bowling Green wants something positive to happen on this first series. The first thing positive that needs to happen is they secure the ball on this kickoff. Uh huh. Monroe City scored on their first possession of the first half. Bowling Green would like to do that here to start the second half. Ball goes through the hands, picked up inside the five. And caught by a shirt tail and brought down inside the 10-yard line. That's not a great start for Bowling Green. Well, line drive kick, and it got by the up back, and then the deep back wasn't able to pick it up clean the first time, and uh, it's all over by that time. The pursuit is there, and Bowling Green will start deep in their own end. Their own seven. There you have it. 
What better way to start the second half than a 93-yard drive, yeah. right? Uh, Dalton brings the offense onto the field for the first time here in the second half. They'll start under center again as they did most of the half. Inside hand or uh, hand off Bowen. to the outside. Bowen, he's got some room, and he takes it all the way out across the 30-yard line. There's a flag. Line. I was going to say he got hit when he was out of bounds. See if they're going to tack on another 15. They've hit him late a couple of times, uh -huh. I thought. So the seven all the way out to the 27. So a 20-yard run by Bowen. And I would expect, unless I've completely lost my mind, which is possible, they'll tack on another 15. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to call a hold against the Bobcats. Oh, my goodness. Oh, but it's from the end of the run. Unbelievable. So you have a hold as he's going out of bounds. Yeah. It's still a first down. Yeah. Nope, they're going to. Now they're going to take it all the way back to the 20 and march it back from there. So it's going to end up being a. So it's going to wipe the run out completely. Now it'd still be a, a seven yard run. So after the play and penalty, it's going to be first. Wow. It's going to be a first down. So first down from there. They said it was after he got the first down somehow. There's a gain of uh, three, maybe four. On this first down, out to the 19. I don't know what kind of crazy call that was. Mm -hmm. So we'll give him 20 yards on the run. We'll take away 10 on the penalty, I guess. Sounds good to me. Just the second penalty of the game. Monroe, Monroe just doesn't have, doesn't commit penalties, I guess, so far. Yeah. So a gain of four, it'll be a second and six. So they got to get their composure back, do the Bobcats. Move the football. On second down. Pitch out to the near side. Trying to reverse field. Gets a couple of more. Now he's met and pushed back. They'll give him forward progress. Out to keel, the keel on the carry. 22-yard line. It's going to be a manageable third down. Gain of four. Talton on the stop. Third and... Uh, a short two. Keel's first carry of the night. Gain of about six yards. It's going to be third down and two for. Well, this is kind of important. This is not four down territory. 10-25 no. to go in the third quarter here from Monroe City. Bobcats trail by six. And they've got the first down and a little bit of more. Good reversal there by Starks. Gets a block, actually ran into his own man. And Starks takes it all the way out to the 45-yard line. Bunch of flags at the end of the play. I don't know what that was all about. So we'll take it from the 22 to the 45. 23 yards on the carry. Tell Monroe City to get away from the conversation. And what are they going to call at the end of this thing? Well, Starks and his lead blocker all of a sudden were right on top of each other. And we'll see if that was due to uh, some sort of Horse collar is going to be yeah. the call. And then unsportsmanlike oh on Bowling Green, so they're going to offset. So Bowling Green will have it first and 10 from the 45. Nope. They're going to march it back and replay the down. Oh, my goodness. So it's going to be third and two again. I thought it was at the end of the play. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Again, unsportsmanlike conduct building against Bowling Green. And these, these are the uh, scholastic uh, officials? So somebody must have said something from Bowling Green because yeah. I didn't really see anything. And, and I think it was maybe the blocking back protecting his running back who got horse collared. Uh huh. And they call a penalty. Wow. Third and uh, two again. And they'll replay the down. Now the official coming in from the near sideline. Always gives you a vote of confidence about your officiating crew when they got to get together and talk about it again. After they've already re-spotted the ball, and now they're going to talk on the other side, and Bowling Green's coaches are going to come out and I think ask. The coach how, wants a number, yeah. I think. Of who who is the call on? And if it was at the end of the play, it, I'm not quite sure if the unsporting was a post-possession foul. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, how can you offset? You, if you ought to mark them both off. You mark off the horse collar, and then you mark off the unsportsmanlike is what I would think, and that may be what the conversation is. And that's happening over on the far sideline. Assuming that the, the unsportsmanlike was a dead ball foul, which should have been. Well, it happened after Starks was down because yeah. the horse collar happened and the Bowling Green guy stepped in to protect his guy. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sure that's what the conversation is. But I don't. doesn't look like they're going to change their mind. This has gone on for a while. Four, four minutes or so, this conversation, and now they're going to say play ball. Interesting. So third and two. Inside handoff again. Nope, he's going to throw, and it's caught. Enough for the first down on the near side. Charlie Bowen on the reception. Yeah, he'll get it out to about the 33-yard line, so a 10-yard gain after all of that. Bulig finally stopped him on the near sideline. But a fresh set. Bowen's second catch of the game. Dalton, perfect so far. Four for four for 38 yards. From the 34-yard line. Hand off goes to Charlie. He's on the far side. Makes his way across midfield. All the way down to the 40, and he's finally brought down. They were trying to rip the ball out most of the way. And he'll stumble all the way to the 30. They'll give him the 33, it looks like. Bulick finally got him, but Charlie Bowen is just rumbling down this field tonight. 34 yards on the carry. That'll put him over 100 for the game. It's and one, it's one coming 12. back. you got to be kidding me. There was a hold, apparently. Good Lord have mercy. My score sheet's a mess because I keep having to scratch out. I need to start writing in pencil, I guess. Huh? I got some, some, some pencils over here. <laughs> Uh, the flags at the Bowling Green 38. This is amazing. Yeah, these guys don't call, but one penalty the entire first half, and now all of a sudden it's a barrage. So another 10-yard penalty. So it's first and 17 for the Bobcats. The home fans love it. Roll out for Dalton. Puts it in the air, and that one's Ooh. off the fingertips, and that's the first incompletion of the night. Brian was open, but a good defensive play. Actually, uh, Bulig. Running free was Bryson Heidecker, yeah. Brian, uh, Braden Heidecker, about the 40 yard line. He had a two or three steps, but, but Dalton was kind of. On the run, kind of hard to throw the ball that far on the run. So second and 16. Run to the near side. And Charlie Bowen is stacked up this time. And it'll bring up third down. Looks like he'll pick up about four on the carry. And Bowling Green jumping around after that play. I'm not sure. Maybe the emotion starting to come out a little bit. Could be. I mean, uh, you get all these crazy calls. Uh, Sets up third and 11 from the 32. And, and I want to see the tape. I'm going to watch it as soon as we post the tape. The big run by Talton. I thought there was holding on our cornerback, uh -huh. but no flag. Roll out. Dalton on third and 11. Puts it to the near side, and it is out of bounds. And to bring up fourth down, the punt team will have to come on for the first time. Yeah, that was the first pass of the night by Dalton. It really was without purpose. That, uh, that didn't have a chance at all. 8.44 to go. Clock stops on the incompletion. So get a good snap, get a good kickoff, cover it. Actually, Hayes is a pretty good kick returner. You've got to keep an eye on him. Uh-huh. Uh, Hayes, the deep man, at the, sets up about the 35-yard line, his own 35. Starks will do the kicking for Bowling Green. Hayes averages 24 yards on the Oh, and they were going to fake, but the play was blown dead. A 
What in heaven's name they're going to call now? Well, I think they, yep, delay game. Oh, man. Well, we talked about mistakes and being clean. It's completely falling apart here in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. However, it's still just a six-point game. That's true. It's going to fall on the defense's hands here momentarily. He gets the kickoff. It's high and short. Bowling Green will hope for a bounce. It bounces straight up and will die at the Bobcat, or excuse me, the Monroe City 48-yard line. So great field position for the Panthers to start this possession. Mm. Yeah, he didn't quite catch that one. Had a little pressure on him. So let's see what the defense has to say. We talked about the man-on-man -man at halftime. Let's see if they can whip their guy and stifle this defense. Boy, a score here by Monroe City will make life rough for the Bobcats. That would be daggers. First and 10 from the Monroe City, 48. 8.35 to go in the third quarter of this district semifinal. Monroe City leads. 20 to 14 and nothing there on first down. Got across the line of scrimmage for maybe a half yard. They're in on the stop for the uh, Bobcats was number 55, Tristan Charlton. Generous mark of a yard. Mm -hmm. Second and nine. Hey, have the Panthers uh, come to the line. Talton in the slot, got to pay attention to him. Near side. And, oh, what a stack up there. Charlie Bowen leading the way, and they stop number 21, Kelson Painter, for a loss. They're going to give him the line of scrimmage, though. Charlie Bowen, Heidecker in there as well. Ooh. Play Lazier, Lazier also I'm sorry, it was Lazier. It was Lazier, not Heidecker. <laughs> 7.40 to go in the quarter. Third and nine, a long nine for Monroe City. And the Bowling Green defense needs a stop. They need to stop. Probably four down territory here, I would guess. You would think. Depending on what they do here. S split trips out to the right this time. Roll out, throws to the far side, and it's short. Mm. Bounce that pass in. Yeah, that was a that one took a nose dive right out of his hand. <laughs> Intended target was Waylon DeGrave. And he shorted him by about two yards. I think the punt team's coming on. Well, I'm, I'm punting it. If I'm coaching, I'm going to try and flip the field and pin Bowling Green back in their own end. You just got to kind of pay attention for a fake, and I don't know if the Bowling Green's buying it. Yep, now they're going to send Keel back deep. Low snap. Kick goes to the far side. And he's going to let it go, and it'll go. It's going to be close. Oh, it took a left-hand turn at the five-yard line. And going to be down at the six. So good field position uh, <laughs> for the uh, Monroe City kick team there. Bowling Green has their work cut out for them. They're going to have to go 94 yards. That punt looked like it was going to go into the end zone, and at the last minute it just turned left mm -hmm. right about the five. So the Bobcats back on the field offensively. The well, let's see if this series they can get the 20 yards forward and stay that way yeah. instead of 20, far, uh, 20 yards forward and 10 yards back or more, actually, in yeah. a couple of those plays. Dalton brings the offense onto the field. And off on first down to is that Starks. Or? Yeah, I couldn't He's tell. He's pushing the pile forward, and they blow it dead. He was still going forward. Be second down, gain of five on the play. Out across the 10 to the 11. Starks up to 62 yards on the ground for the game. Nearing the midway point of this third quarter. Snail's base here in the third after a very quick first well, half. Well, when you've got four, five, six penalties, however many we had there in that first series, that'll slow anything down. Uh-huh. Second and five. And off goes to Bone. He spins off a man. Going to be close to the first down, about a yard short maybe. Bring up yeah, third and one. I think they're going to mark him about the 15, it looks like. So, yeah, it'll be fourth and or third and one, I should say. Charlie has that unique ability to spin off a hit. He definitely runs downhill. There's no question about it. Everything's going towards the other goal line when he runs the football. 
third and one from the 15. The Bobcats own 15. Look to be a little bit of movement. No flags and a first down as they get it across the 20. Charlie Bowen again with a gain of five. So good job to get out of the shadow of the goal post. Now let's see if they can do some damage here. Down to 536. Monroe still leads it 20 to 14. We're in the third quarter. Same as our halftime score. Bobcats have been hurt by penalties here to start the second half, but so far moving the ball well on their second possession of the half. Dalton down under center. Pitch out to the near side for Starks. Turns it upfield, tripped up as he made his move. And he'll get, uh, he'll get another 11 yeah, yards. 10 or 11 yards, good run. That time they got the wide receiver out to block. The last time they ran that play, the wide receiver was on the other side, and the coaching staff was over here throwing a fit because they weren't lined up like they should have been. 4.50 to play in the third quarter, clock running after they set those chains. No rush for the Bobcats. They can burn clock all they want. Down by just six here in the third. Ooh, Starks stopped completely. Now it starts his move up field. Ooh, and man, he made, he made three yards. Or, it looks like they're going to step back and give him two. The marks in this game are a little bit suspicious to me. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you're right. He was hit right as he got the football three or four yards deep and was able to turn that into a two-yard game. 4.15 to play in the third quarter. Second and eight after that gain of two by Starks on first down. Dalton, hand off. No, he keeps it, and that pass is rejected. Wow. Getting yeah. up there for that one. I believe that was a Talton. Yeah, Joshua Talton blocked that with both arms. We've seen him on the basketball floor. He's got a few hops. Yeah. <laughs> he jumped up and swatted that one down. So it'll third be third and eight. And he jumped too much. That hits him in the hands. It's a pick six. That's a tough pass for Dalton rolling against his right arm and having him try and throw it against his body. Uh, and that time he couldn't get it past Dalton. Third and eight for Bowling Green from the 34-yard line, their own 34. Back in the shotgun this time. Pump fake now puts it in the air. It's caught. And on the move across the 50-yard line is number 26 for the Bobcats, Owen Niemeyer. And that's a big conversion on third down into Monroe City territory at the 42-yard line. 26-yard catch and run. Stops the string of three incompletes by Dalton and moves Bowling Green into Monroe City territory, as you said, at the 42-yard line with 3.35 to play here in the third. Play took a while to develop, but uh, Niemeyer, once he got that ball, ran for a while. Out of the shotgun this time. Hand off to Starks. He goes to the far side. Going to be very close to first down yardage. Looks like they mark him down right at the marker. Well, they've started going out of the shotgun. It's almost like seeing two different offenses. And they're going to get him first down. They don't measure anymore. Nope. Have you noticed that? <laughs> Everything's eyeballed. Uh, I know, I know some officials that, that no, they shouldn't use their eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> Three minutes to go in the third quarter. Bowling Green moving. Starks on first and ten after a ten-yard run. Breaks a tackle and stretches forward for a gain of about seven. So Michael's starting to heat up in the second half. Yeah, they switched from being under center on this series to predominantly out of the shotgun. Looks like they're going to give him six. Jag Hayes on the stop. Two and a half minutes to play. Bowling Green trailing by six as they come to the line. Long wait here on this third down play. Now they look to the sideline. They're trying to draw him off. Still 10 on the play clock. Now they come set again. Fakes a handoff to Starks, rolls out to the near side, puts the ball in the air, and it is incomplete. Woo. Thrown into traffic trying yeah. to hit Niemeyer. Yeah, he threw it in amongst about three defenders and one 
receiver that time. I think he wanted to go on the deep corner route, but uh, and I think that was uh, uh, Heidecker, uh, but he hadn't broken free yet, so he had to throw underneath and fell incomplete. So it'll be third and four, 2.05 to go. Clock stopped on the incompletion. He's back under center here for this third down play. Inside handoff to Charlie Bowen. He's got the first down and rumbles forward Woo! inside the 15 Woo! to about the 13-yard line of the Monroe City Panthers. They had him by the shoestring or he was gone. Mm -hmm. Big 13-yard gain. Puts him over 100 for the game. It's been a while since I, he's had a 100-yard game, I believe. But this game is tailor-made for Charlie Bowen's style of running. That it is. And pre-snap whistles and a timeout taken timeout. defensively. We'll say, what's he pointing at us for? 142 <laughs> to go here in the third quarter. Bowling Green inside the Panther 15 when we come back, trailing 20-14 to 14 on Eagle 102. Is it time to renew, redo, or rebuild? People's Bank and Trust can help you make those home improvements without springing a leak in your budget. I'm Christine Rutherford, and we have loans designed specifically for repairs and renovations, along with home equity lines of credit. Stop by your local People's Bank in Bowling Green, and let's talk about how People's Bank can help you. People's Bank and Trust, online at www.pbtc.net, or give me a call at 573-324-2525. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender, MLO number 421603, NMLS number 407724. High School Sports on KJFM is brought to you by Pike County Mutual Insurance, Browns Processing, and Bank of Louisiana. After three quarters, it's Mark Twain leading Louisiana 28 to 24. Here it's 20 to 14 still, minute 42 to go in the third quarter. Bowling Green at the Panther 13 yard line. Good drive. Remember, it started on their own five yard line. Now let's see if they can cash in with a touchdown. Burned a lot of clock on this drive as well. Give is to Starks, and he is met as he crosses the line of scrimmage. He'll fall forward inside the 10, and he'll gain about five yards on first down. Anytime you're picking up five, maybe six, they're going to call it five on first down. That's a good thing. Minute and 22 seconds to play here in the third quarter. And the big thing on this drive, Bowling Green has cleaned up those penalties. That's me <laughs> knocking on wood in case you couldn't hear it. Give is to Starks. He's rumbling. He's in for the touchdown. Michael Starks for nine yards or eight yards and a touchdown. And this game is tied at 20 with Bowling Green having the extra point still to come. Great run right up the middle. Was hit. Carried a couple players with him into the end zone. So the Bobcats. Now, as we talk, these extra points, extraordinarily important. 40 on to kick. They're bringing the thunder. And it's up, and it hit the upright. Hit the upright on the far side, and this game will remain tied at 20. His first miss in three chances for extra points tonight, and even the pros are missing those now. A minute five to go here in the third. More of this district semifinal coming up on Eagle 102. When you support a locally owned pharmacy, you're contributing to the growth of the community. The dollars you spend stay right here to support our local community. Health Mart pharmacies are locally owned pharmacies. There's one right here. Health Mart pharmacists have a personal commitment to their communities because just like you, they support their community. Health Mart pharmacies are locally owned and hometown proud. Louisiana is a Health Mart town. Family Drug Health Mart Pharmacy. The right people, the right price, right downtown. Health Mart, caring for you and about you. Eagle 102 Sports on KJFM is brought to you by People's Bank and Trust, County Market in Louisiana, and Bowling Green Insurance. 105 to go in the third quarter here from Monroe City High School. The Bowling Green Bobcats have tied this ball game up at 20. And the extra point doinks off the upright. Doink. That's what the sound it makes. <laughs> and so that's what we've always called it, the big old doink. Brand new ball game, though, with 13 minutes to go. 
kick is a ground ball picked up and it will go forward for a couple across the 30 yeah, to about the 33. That would be the longest return of the game by either team, a whopping four yards. Mm -hmm. And we'll credit that to A.J. Shoemaker. So can the Bowling Green defense pick up right where they left off? If you recall, Monroe City got the ball at their own, at their own 48, and Bowling Green was able to stifle them on the first series. 101 to play here in the third quarter in a tie game at 20. On first down, give on the far side, and not much there. I think that was Talton maybe that time on the carry. He'll give him two. That's generous. <laughs> that it is. Hayden Finley on the stop for the Bobcats with 40 seconds to go here in the third quarter of this ball game. Hayes again runs to the sideline. He gets his exercise just getting the plays from, uh -huh. the, from the sideline. Second and a short eight. Put a man in motion to the near side. That's the ball carrier. And it is snuffed out immediately. That was Josiah Talton on the uh, carry, and there was nothing there for him. Yeah, he had a big run in the first half. And yeah, he'll lose five yards on the pay, it looks like. Not a lot there. And that'll do it for three quarters of this ball game. Nothing's been decided. 20-20, to 20, Bowling Green and Monroe City. And districts continue the semifinals of the Class 2 District 6 tournament with the fourth quarter after this on Eagle 102. Hey, this is Ryan with Mid-America Auto and Towing in Bowling Green. We've got something for everybody's budget. Everything from $1,000 all the way up to $35,000. We have a constant rotation of new inventory, including cars, trucks, and SUVs. So if you're out and you're looking for a new car, come by and see me. If you're looking for a particular vehicle and you don't see it on the lot or the website, let me know, and I'll do my best to find it for you. Mid-America Auto and Towing, just off Highway 54 in Bowling Green, is a one-stop shop. Like us on Facebook or check out our website, midamericaautoandtowing.com. Bringing you all the action from the Eagle 102 Broadcast Booth, sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. Well, Paris has tied South Callaway with uh, 10.39 to go in the fourth quarter. That's the one against the uh, five seed in that Class 1 District 2 tournament. The winner will take on the winner of the Mark Twain-Louisiana game, which uh, the Tigers are leading in the third quarter, not after three quarters. So still a lot of football to be played in center between the Tigers and the Louisiana Bulldogs. Yes, and a lot of football to be played right here for Monroe City. We're going to play one quarter to decide this. Who'd have thunk it, right? Uh-huh. And a big uh, third down play coming up for the Bobcat defense. Third and 12 for Monroe City offensively. And they'll be looking to throw. Roll out for the quarterback. Hayes puts it in the air. It is caught and brought down near the marker. There on the tackle is he may have got it. Cooper Keel. Talton on Talton the catch. Got exactly what he needed, about 12 and a half yards, and it's a first down for the Monroe City Panthers. Well, a good roll out that time, and pressure was in on Hayes, but he was able to sidestep it. And it uh, looked like Bowen in there on him and uh, was able to complete the pass. First and 10 from the 42-yard line. Handoff goes inside and stumbling forward for a few is number 24, Keaton Pennywell. Pennywell. Pennywell's first big gain of the first, or the second half, I should say, eight yards on the game. Brings up second and two from midfield for the Monroe City Panthers. Clock running down to 11-12 to go in regulation. So that completed pass on third down, energized maybe Pennewell a little bit. Ten fifty-eight to play. Tie game, midfield for the Panthers, and run goes outside. They'll dive forward to get back to the line of scrimmage. That was a carry by number twenty-one at Kelson Painter. Number 
Painter had a big no run in the first half. Looks like he's going to lose a yard, 49-yard run in the first half that mm -hmm. set up the first touchdown by Monroe City, but stopped for a loss there. It's third down. 2020 our score, sorry, 10.30 to play in the game. Third and three from now their own 49 for the Panthers. Bowling Green would love to push them back a little further here and set up uh, a little question going into fourth down. There you go. But, uh, Hayes going to put it in the air to the near sideline, and that one is caught. Oh, he dropped it. He, he dropped, dropped it. it. Intended uh, target was number 21, Kelson Painter. Boy, oh, boy, Painter made a great adjustment on the football as a defensive back, which I think was Cordy, uh, overran him, didn't know where the football was, but Painter stopped, got his hands on it, but it fell incomplete. Rolls away from Painter with 10.07 to play here in the fourth quarter. Fourth, and we'll call it three. They've got to get to the Bobcat 48-yard uh, line. They're on their own 49. Big play in this game. Bowling Green have great field position if they can hold. Uh-huh. They rush to the line as they have all night. And now a timeout taken. Looks like Monroe City maybe is going to call a timeout. They burned two already here in this third or uh, late in the third and early in the fourth quarter. 10.07 to play. We're knotted at 20. Big fourth and three coming up for Monroe City when we come back on Eagle 102. Hi, I'm Keith Oaks, Director of Physical Therapy. I'm Eric Schaefer. I work in physical therapy. And I choose Pike County Memorial Hospital. And I choose Pike County Memorial Hospital. I'm Tylee Mills, the CEO of Pike County Memorial Hospital. You've heard it from your friends, family, and even neighbors. They choose to work at Pike County Memorial Hospital. Choose a hospital where you're more than just a patient. You're our friend, family member, and neighbor. Quality care from quality people. Pike County Memorial Hospital. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102 is brought to you by Cellular and Satellite Center, the Mercantile Bank, and Bowling Green Tractor. Two plays after Paris tied South Callaway. The uh, Bulldogs of South Callaway pull back ahead 22-14, 10-23 to go in that ball game. Well, remember on fourth down, the last time they ran that corner route for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. And it was about fourth and four on that particular play as well. Fourth and three here. And they snuff it out. Bowling Green, good pursuit. I couldn't tell who had the ball at first, yeah, but it's inside, Finley. It was an inside reverse. Excuse me, Clay Lazier on the tackle. And the run was Painter, and he'll lose a couple. So Bowling Green will take over on the Monroe City 44 or 46 yard line. Great field position for the Cats. Let's see if they can grind this 10 minutes out, huh? Is that asking Ooh. too much? <laughs> 10 minutes, uh, uh, four, 46 yards, 10 yeah, minutes, yeah, uh, yeah. and score on the final play. I, I don't even know if that's possible, <laughs> actually. <laughs> well, we've seen some penalties in this game. <laughs> that is for sure. First and 10 for the Bobcats. From the 46-yard line of Monroe City. It's Starks on first down. A little confusion there on the handoff. But that delays it just enough to open up a hole. And Bowling Green will get uh, about eight, maybe nine on the play. Uh, this has been the year of the crazy bro broken play, hasn't uh -huh. it? Another broken play there where, as you said, Dalton and Starks ran into each other. And it, it broke things up enough and gave Starks enough room to run. He actually just barely shy of ten yards. Mm -hmm. They'll give him nine and a half. Second and less than one. Inside the 40-yard line, Starks again, and he'll get that uh, half yard and then a little bit more across the 35 of the Panthers before he's pushed yeah. back fresh set for Bowling Green. Give him three. That'll give him 116 yards on the ground. 20, 21 carries for Starks. Kind of important to remember that Monroe City has used two of their three timeouts yes, they already. Have. First and 10 for the Bobcats inside the 35-yard line of the Panthers. And here's Starks again going three plays in a row. He sidesteps a hit, and he'll rumble down inside the 30 to about the 27-yard line of the Panthers. It's very manageable second down. Yeah, another seven yards. Look, uh, Maybe, yeah, yep. we'll give him seven. Not yeah. an inch more. Off left tackle, and like you said, he broke a tackle or two and then fell forward. Carried a player or two with him. Did the electric slide between two guys. 
Down to eight and a half minutes to play in regulation. Bowling Green moving inside the 30-yard line to the 27 of the Panthers. About Charlie Bowen time, isn't it? Yep, he gets the inside handoff. Met and push back. He'll get a couple. He's going to be short of the first down by about a yard. It'll be third and one. Yeah, what are they going to give him? Going to give him? Ah, they're just going to give him one, aren't they? Yeah. So it's third and two. Initially, the guy on the far side gave him two and then pushed back. Four down territory. Seven fifty-five to play in the game. Again, we're tied at twenty. We're in the fourth. Bowen and Starks in the backfield on third and two. It's going to be to Michael, and he's going to push forward. Got some lineman help, and he's very close. He is close. The eyeball test is coming. First down, Bowling Green. First down. He looked as he was backing <laughs> away. Said, wind that clock, move those chains, let's go. 20 to 20, our score. Bowling Green <laughs> inside the 25 now with a fresh set of downs. The old eyeball test works again. Dalton under center as he has been most of the night. Oh, and Bowling Green moves. Good Lord. That's Tristan Charlton that stumbled forward. It's going to be first and 15, stops the clock with 7-11 to play. 30 yards and penalties, the sixth penalty on Bowling Green. That's kind of a big one. Remember, we talked about not letting the moment be too big for you. Uh -huh. Monroe or Centrea game, a penalty started that final drive. Well, same thing here, not starting the drive, but in a very crucial point of this game. Definitely. First and 15, they gave us to Bowen. He was initially hit at the line of scrimmage. He'll fall forward. Gets a little bit of that yardage back, about three yards of it. It's going to be second and 12. Well, if you look at the Monroe City defense, they, uh, they are stacking it in the middle now. They had three down linemen over the guard center guard. Trying to put it into that inside running. They give him just over a yard, actually. So it's second and uh, 13. But the clock continues to run near the midway point of this fourth quarter. Roll out. Dalton throws across his body, and that one is incomplete. Airmailed the receiver that time. Yep. Who was the intended target? Was that? Uh, uh, I think it was. Gunner Bryant was yeah, the Bryant intended was target. There. So, yeah, he had him open, just missed him. Again, they're rolling it to his left, which makes him throw against the grain with his right arm. And that's a, I think that's a tough throw for a big-time college quarterback. Uh-huh. Now they're up against it. Third and 13. Trips to the left, single receiver to the right. Bowen behind him. He's going to roll out and throw to the far side and taken out of bounds. About five yards short, gain of eight on the play. And it's going to set up fourth and five. Couldn't see who the uh, target was on the far Niemeyer, side. Isn't it? Yep, yeah, it is. So they'll give him eight. Yeah, it's going to be a short five. And four. They call it four. We'll go with that. From inside the 20-yard line, ball sitting about the 18. Pretty tough order here. On fourth and four. They're running. Nope. Roll out. Quarterback keeps it, and he's tackled, and it's a turnover on downs. Oh, the inside handoff I think could have got him the yards. Yep, Dalton was rolling to his left again. Got caught from behind that time. He picks up uh, about two. That left him too short. Ran about 12 to get those two, but like you said, two yards short of the conversion. That's the first time Bowling Green's been stopped on fourth down tonight. Well, and now this is what Monroe City wants. 
the football, 6.13 to go, a chance to run down the field and win it. And now we've got a timeout on the field. Now well, they're the uh, side judge on the far side was a little confused about ball placement. And not much there on first down for number 24, Keaton Pennywell. They might give him a yard. Two well, out he, to the 20. <laughs> he started at a yard and he inched his way forward for two by the time they set the ball. Mm. 5.50 to go. Clay Lazier in on the stop after the short gain, second and eight. Yeah, you got to watch for the play action or some sort of sweeps with Talton. Lots of moving around there as they get set here for second and eight. Trip receivers to the left this time. He's out to throw. Puts it in the air, and it is picked off, picked off by Bowling Green. He just tore it away from the receiver. Oh, my. The target was number 14, Dion White. And who took it away? I couldn't tell who it was. That is a long way away. Gunner like Bryant. Bryant yeah. Gunner Bryant. Who else? Why do we even ask? Yeah. Gunner Bryant with the big INT. And Bowling Green has the ball back. Just two plays after that uh, turnover on downs. First and 10 from the 32 yard line of the Panthers. And here we go. You got to pound it in here. 523 left on the clock. Stark. Breaks away from a tackle and then thrown down. He's going to be very close to a first down. Had him by the shirt, but he broke away from it as they came with a big-time blitz that time. Clock moving down to 5.06, gain of eight on the play. Second and two for the Bobcats. Now they stop the clock for some reason. They'll wind it again. Starks up to 133 yards on the ground on 24 carries. Second and two for the Bobcats. What a turn of events on that interception by Gunner Bryant. Defensive lineman jumped. They didn't throw a flag. Nope. Here's a pass up the middle, and that is almost picked off oh, after it goodness. bounced off the intended target's hands. Threw it into Charlie a, Bowen. Threw it into a crowd that time. Holy moly. Charlie Bowen tried the uh, basket catch over the shoulder, and it uh, kind of bounced out of that cradle and almost got picked off. There was uh, Kyle Hayes on the coverage. It'll be third and two. Pretty good time to take a shot at the end zone, yeah. though. You got sticks in your favor. Two downs to get two yards. So third and two with 439 to play. You want to keep that clock moving, though. First down run here for Starks. He stays in bounds as he crosses the 25-yard line. Good enough for the first. Give him five on the carry. Stayed in bounds down to 432 to play. No worries about the clock. Bowling Green has three timeouts. They wind it again inside four and a half minutes. In case you're just joining us, we're tied at 20. 420 to play in the game. And a three, still Mark Twain 28, Louisiana 24. That's at center. Quarterback keeper, and Dalton runs for about five. Well, that time they didn't put anybody over the center, so Dalton took advantage of it. Gets five yards at second and five. Pennywell and Talton in on the stop after the gain of, well, they'll call it four. 350 remaining in this ball game. Bobcats and Panthers tied at 20. Bowling Green into the red zone. Ball at the 15. Oh, it's Bowen, and he is in for the he score. In. Charlie Bowen for 15 yards with 3.27 to go in this ball game, and the Bobcats take a 26-20 lead. Here in the fourth quarter. Now, what do you do? Yep. Because you know Monroe City 
is going to go for two because they yes. haven't shown a field goal kicker yet. Nope. And they'll send the offense back onto the field, I believe, to try and convert this after the touchdown. That's almost got to be the call, doesn't it? Yeah. Because if you kick the field goal, Monroe's going to go for two anyway. Yep. And they're either going to score six or eight, so seven does you no good. Bowen, the only man deep. They put a man in motion, and he's going to try and throw for the uh, two-point conversion. No. He goes to the run, and he is stopped. No, they're still pushing that pile. Is he in? No, they're going to say no. He did cross the goal line, but they said his forward progress was stopped already. Yeah, and I don't think you can. I don't and think now a flag can. comes in, and that was uh, it's going to be a 15-yarder against Bowling Green. And that is huge. Yes, it is. Another unsportsmanlike. Yep. You got to keep your tongue. And it was definitely something that was said. With 3.27 to go, Bowling Green. Oh, they're going to have to super kick this one <laughs> just to get Unbelievable. Uh, Monroe City Unbelievable. backed up. 26-20. We'll take a quick break. Come back with more fourth quarter action after this on Eagle 102. Bundle at Pike County Mutual Insurance and save. Pike County Mutual offers home auto discounts simply by placing your auto insurance through one of several auto companies that Pike County Farmers Mutual represent and your home with Pike County Mutual. Ask about the great rates on your personal vehicle, farm trucks, big or small, or even your motorcycle and side-by-sides. Stop by and see myself, Corey Buchanan, Buddy Bibb, or Kathy Gam at your hometown insurance company since 1895. Come home and share with Pike County Mutual Insurance on the square in Bowling Green. You'll be glad you did. High School Sports on KJFM is brought to you by Vicki Cadwallader, Real Estate and Perkins Electrical Service. 3.27 to go. Bowling Green will have to kick off from the 25-yard line, their own 25-yard line after that penalty. Well, we talked about it in the pregame. This is the moment too big for you. Man, you got to keep your composure. In high school football, the lineman can't assist the running back across the end zone, and he was stopped, and the lineman joined in, and they tried, tried to push him, and they blew it dead. Now the question will be, will they try and drill one deep and kick it by these guys because they're all expecting a short kick. Uh-huh. That's what I'd try and do. And it's short. A little trouble at the 40-yard line. Comes to the near side. He's across midfield. Into the secondary, and he's gone. We're going to have a tie game. Talton takes back the kickoff for a touchdown. 3-16, the time of the TD. And we're tied at 26 with the two-point conversion yet to come. No flags anywhere on the field. 55 yards is the call. Now we know why they didn't kick it deep. Unbelievable. Joshua Talton, 26 all, 3.16 to play in the ball game. And nothing's been decided yet. Well, they'll go for two, as yeah. we said. The defense has done a good job defending these. Well, they converted one of three. Here he goes, roll out, Hayes reverses field. He's got a man in the end zone, and it is caught. Two-point conversion good. Monroe City leads 28-26, 3.16 to go in the ball game here for Monroe City High School on Eagle 102. The Mercantile Bank of Louisiana is introducing Merc PK Mobile, mobile banking with remote deposit capture. Any customer with online banking can now access your Mercantile Bank accounts from any device, including your smartphone and tablet, everywhere you go. With the ability to take a picture of your check and deposit it into your Mercantile Bank account, you'll never have to worry about getting to the bank. Find more information by visiting MercBK.com. The Mercantile Bank, where they've been serving the Louisiana area for more than 100 years. Located on the corner of 3rd and Georgia Streets in downtown Louisiana. Member FDIC. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102 is brought to you by State Farm Insurance, Cindy Blaylock, Young Enterprises Incorporated, and Pike County Memorial Hospital. Well, Jim Ross, no one said it was going to be easy. And it's not. 28-26, Monroe City leads 316 to play. A lot of time and all three timeouts. So Bowling Green 
has you know, they haven't had any problems moving the football no, for the haven't. most part tonight, but they're going to have to have to do it with a little quicker pace this time. Kind of amazing. No ineligible downfield as Hayes rolled out. Right. We'll see what happens. Secure the kicks. Issue number one. Yes. It's oh muffed, but picked up uh, nicely by Starks. And he's across the 40 to the near side and across the 45-yard line to the 47. That helps. It does. From the 25 to the 47, nice little 22-yard kick return after a muff. Yeah. <laughs> or fumble, actually. Yeah. But you're right, great field position with 3.08 to go in the game. Trailing by two. Forty-seven yard line is where Dylan Dalton and the offense will start. First and ten for the Bobcats. Space up the middle. The give is to Charlie Bowen, and he rumbles across the fifty. Gain of four on first down to the forty-nine yard line. Didn't quite get the push off the offensive line that time. So they had some running room. Middle linebacker filled nicely. That uh, I'll move the mark back to the 50-yard line, so a gain of three on first down. And Starks takes it from midfield. Stutter step around a man, finds a little bit of room, and he's brought down into Monroe City territory. It'll be third down and about four. Looks like they're only going to give him two, huh? So third and four, clock down to 225. Bobcats, four down territory. This is the ball game, this drive. And there is a run for a first down. Bowen, and what is that? Well, that was Cordy and Talton hooking up. I, I think it was Cordy. About 15 yards deep in the backfield. and They were wrestling. We said, a little arm dragging to toss there. You know, what the heck. Gain of about six for Bowen. Good for the first down. More of the story is clock still running. Yes, it is. Two minutes to go. And here's Starks on first down. And he'll grind for a few more across the 40 to the 37-yard line. It's a gain of almost, well, they're going to call it three on first down, second and seven. Inside two minutes to go. Painter on the tackle for the Panthers. Second down, seven, four. Cordy will go to the sideline. With a minute 40 to go. This is the ball game. Bowling Green trails by two, 28-26. Roll out. Dalton going to take it himself, and he's brought down. That play just has not netted a whole lot. No, no, they're running that rollout and flooding to the right side, and Dalton's got to either decide to pass or if he's going to decide to run, he's got to do it sooner. He's yeah. letting the pursuit suit come. That was a looks like a loss of a yard, no, maybe. They gave him two, two Did plus. they give him two? And a timeout taken by the Bobcats with a minute 22 to go. It'll be third and about five. Bowling Green trailing Monroe City 28-26 here in the fourth on Eagle 102. Ingram Plumbing has always been known for its outstanding plumbing service. But did you know that Ingram's is also the largest retail plumbing supply store in the area? We carry Delta faucets, a complete line of Whirlpool tubs and showers, jacuzzi pumps, and many other specialty items. At Ingram Plumbing, we're ready to meet all your plumbing needs. I should know. I'm Bonnie Ingram, and I've worked there for over 50 years. Stop by Ingram Plumbing today, Highway 61 Bowling Green. High School Sports on KJFM is brought to you by Abel's Quick Shops, Mike's Tire and Service Center, and all parts. It'll be third and five for the Bobcats. They're up against it. On the 36-yard line of Monroe City, still have two timeouts, 122 to play in the game. Monroe City, 36-yard line. This will be a... I, th I think a Starks run set up a uh, Bowen run. Need something big. Yeah. Here's the Bowen run, and he's got the first down. That'll move the chains down so inside they need the to 30. Get, yeah, they need to get and up. And a flag comes in at the end again. They need to get up to the line of scrimmage. Oh, they're not going to call a penalty on Monroe, are they? Come on. No, I, I, 
the way it came in, it looked like another unsportsmanlike or something. Well, what did they give him on the carry? They gave him seven. Face mask against the defense. Ooh. Add 15 to that. Well, well, well. The second penalty of the night on Monroe City. <laughs> Minute 16 to play. Kind of big one, too. <laughs> well, they must not have been a 15-yard penalty. Here's Bowen again on first down. Just trying to feel his way forward, and he'll get about five. And the clock runs. Down to one minute to play. Two timeouts. They'll give him four on the play. Second and six for Bowling Green. Fakes a handoff to Starks. Puts it in the air toward the end zone. That's a wobbler, and that is caught. Is it in? No, no good. Incomplete pass. Dalton trying to connect in the corner of the end zone and just overthrew it a little bit. Nice catch in the corner, but he couldn't keep his feet in bounds. And actually, I couldn't really tell if he held on to it. I think he, uh, I think he uh, was bobbling it. I don't know if it ever hit the ground, but he didn't have control when he was in bounds. So it'll be third and six. It's going to be third down six for Bowling Green. 44 seconds, 44.7 to be exact to play in the game. 28-26 Monroe. Clock stopped on the incompletion. Fakes the handoff. Here comes the pressure. Good job avoiding it by Dalton. And that one's incomplete. Off the fingertips, it was thrown a little bit high for the intended target, Cooper Keel. So here comes your ball game. Yep. Fourth and six. Down to 39.5 seconds to go. Bowling Green will surely call a timeout and talk about this. They've got will. two left. They'll take one now. 39.5 on the clock. 28-26. The Panthers lead the Bobcats. The end of the ballgame coming up on Eagle 102. Here's one question that has no wrong answer. Are you going to choose the new Shell and Fuel Rewards card to be used at Shell stations or the Shell and Fuel Rewards MasterCard that can be used everywhere MasterCard is accepted? With both, you save 10 cents per gallon up to 20 gallons every time you fill up. And you also earn 10% rebates on your first $1,200 in non-fuel purchases per year at Shell stations. See? You can't go wrong with either. Visit www.shell.us slash get rewards and apply today. At participating Shell stations only. Terms and conditions apply. Eagle 102 Sports on KJFM is brought to you by Ingram Plumbing, Bowling Green Pharmacy, and Mid-America Auto and Towing. Yep, for some drama. Yeah, I had to get out of my chair for this one. <laughs> Fourth and six for the Bowling Green Bobcats inside the Monroe City 20. 39.5 seconds to go, and they're trailing 28 to 26. Do you go for the first down? Do you go for the touchdown here on Fourth and six. Well, you still have a timeout left. You do. So you can go for the first. You've got to take what the defense gives you, I yep. think. Dalton in the deep shotgun now. Here comes the pressure. Steps around one man, pointing. Does he have a target? He does, and it is incomplete, and that's Under the ball thrown. game. Three incompletions. And that's how Bowling Green season's going to come to an end. Oh, my goodness. He had running room to get the first down, could have run out of bounds, and just underthrew it. Had the receiver open, and it falls incomplete, and Monroe City's going to win this football game. It still came down to six, seven plays in this ball game, too. Without a doubt. Two huge mistakes that we'll talk about in the postgame. Yes, we will. 28, 26, 32.4. They'll only have to kneel down. An official's timeout. And now an official's timeout. I'm not sure why. Oh, an injury. So they're helping the guy okay. off right there. A Monroe City player. And is that uh, That's, uh, Josiah Tall? Josiah, I think, I believe, yeah. Number three. And he has helped off. And both Taltons have taken some licks in this game. That they have. 
Yeah, Monroe City will definitely remember this one next week. I'm fairly confident that every time a Talton takes a hit, uh, Brock Idris shudders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's, the, he's the boys' basketball coach. Uh -huh. And there's the kneel down. I'll have to do it one more time, it looks like. Bowling Green started taking off their helmets and stuff. They'll have to come back to the line. 15 seconds. Actually, they'll, they'll reset the clock now, and that'll be the ball game. Our final in this one. Monroe City on a kick return and a two-point conversion defeat the Bowling Green Bobcats 28-26. We'll be back at the postgame show for you after this on Eagle 102. The Eagle 102 postgame show is coming up, brought to you by Abel's Quick Shops. Here's one question that has no wrong answer. Are you going to choose the new Shell and Fuel Rewards card to use at Shell stations? or the Shell and Fuel Rewards MasterCard that can be used everywhere MasterCard is accepted. With both, you save 10 cents per gallon, up to 20 gallons every time you fill up. And you also earn 10% rebates on your first $1,200 in non-fuel purchases per year at Shell stations. See, you can't go wrong with either. Visit www.shell.us slash get rewards and apply today. At participating Shell stations only, terms and conditions apply. Farmers, the crew at Mike's Tire and Service Center is here to serve you. They know the hours you put in, definitely not your typical 8 to 5, which makes it difficult to get that equipment in for service. Therefore, they offer on-the-farm tire repair. Call Mike's Tire and Service Center and they'll be happy to work with you to get you back to operation as usual. Hi folks, my name is Cody Kirkendall, Mike's Tire and Service Center, located on Business Highway 61 in Bowling Green. Mike's Tire and Service Center proudly supports all area farmers. Daily life is a bit different right now than what we're used to. Some are feeling the effects more than others, but let's remember that this too shall pass and try to find ways to keep positive, help others in need, continue to support our businesses as best we can, but also take this time of distancing and shutdowns to self-reflect and improve. Spend quality time with family, exercise, pray, tackle a home improvement project, even if it's just a power cleaning inside and out, but do something that helps you feel empowered and moving forward. Vicki Cadwalder Real Estate, praying for good to come out of trials. This is Kyle Scherter, Assistant Vice President at Community State Bank of Missouri. We offer a variety of loans to meet your needs. Whether you're looking for a conventional loan or a HELOC or an FHA, VA, or USDA loan, give us a call. We have some of the best rates around. Community State Bank of Missouri, your hometown community bank since 1887. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Hear all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth, sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. Time now for the Eagle 102 postgame show on KJFM, sponsored by Abel's Quick Shops. A well, nice moment there as the teams uh, join together for a prayer following this game as uh, Monroe City outlasts Bowling Green 28-26. The Bobcats take the 26-20 uh, uh, lead late in the uh, fourth quarter. We think... Uh, there it is. They can't get the two-point conversion. Get a little frustrated because uh, they thought they had converted, uh, but you can't uh, you can't get the lineman to push a runner across the uh, the threshold of the goal line. Uh, so it was waved off, and uh, Bowling Green uh, didn't like it. Said something. Got a 15-yard penalty, which set up a, a Talton. Uh, uh, return for a touchdown. They get the two-point conversion and take this one 28-26. Well, yeah, just so the people understand, it moved Bowling Green's kickoff back to their own 25-yard uh -huh. line, and Talton's kick return was only 55 yards because he got the ball at, the, at his own 45 uh -huh. and ran it back for the touchdown. And, uh, oh, my, yeah, heartbreaking stuff. Uh, they still had the football and a chance to win the football game. Uh, but they just they didn't have it through the air tonight. Uh, we'll statistically, uh, we might as well talk well, about and, it right and now. He, uh, Dylan Dalton started his night, uh, completing his first what four or five passes. First four, four for four to start. Uh, finished six for fifteen. On the ground though, uh -huh. uh, Starks twenty-seven carries, one forty-three. Bowen. 17 carries, 142. Hmm. Yeah, so a lot a lot of good stuff on the ground, but uh, two or three mistakes, you know. You, you, you look back, uh, you had the fumble kick, gave Monroe City a short field, and they scored a touchdown on that. You had uh, a fourth, fourth down, fourth and what was it, fourth and four from the 12-yard uh, line. 
and uh, with 10.9 seconds yeah. to go in the half, and they were able to complete a touchdown in the deep corner. Uh, and then you had the penalty and the kick return. And, uh, you know, when you go back, you, we talked about this before the game, you got to – and, and in their benefit, they got a huge turnover on the interception yeah. uh, to give them the chance. And uh, uh, they just couldn't get over the hump. But we talked about in the pregame, you got to you got to play clean football, and you got to take care of it. And even though they just had one turnover, they had a boatload of penalties. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven penalties. The last of which uh, the 15-yarder was the worst of the bunch. Needless to say, and when you do that against good football teams. You lose close football games. That's yep. just the way it is. Definitely. About 2.25 to go at uh, Mark Twain High School. The Tigers lead the Louisiana Bulldogs 36-24. to 24. So it's looking more and more like the Tigers will advance to take on the uh, winner of that South Callaway-Paris game, which South Callaway is starting to pull away from Paris. After Paris had tied it at 14, the last two scores have gone to the uh, South Callaway Bulldogs. So looks like Mark Twain will – Trade Bulldogs and play uh, South Callaway in a 1-2 matchup next week. Um, that was Monroe City. We'll take on Palmyra most likely. We're projecting uh, here on uh, Eagle 102 Sports, uh, the winner of the uh, Palmyra-Clark County game will be the Palmyra Panthers. Uh, uh, it's a final. 35, it is, 35 to 8, yes. See, 35. so my projection was correct. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Oh. I got a few other scores for okay. you if you want to get to it. We want to get well, to Well, let's them. take a quick break, okay. uh, yeah, and, we'll, and come uh, we'll come back with some scores and uh, wrap up uh, our coverage here from uh, Monroe City as uh, Monroe City defeats Bowling Green 28-26. to 26. More of the postgame show for you after this on Eagle 102. Here's one question that has no wrong answer. Are you going to choose the new Shell and Fuel Rewards card to be used at Shell stations? Or the Shell and Fuel Rewards MasterCard that can be used everywhere MasterCard is accepted? With both, you save 10 cents per gallon up to 20 gallons every time you fill up. And you also earn 10% rebates on your first $1,200 in non-fuel purchases per year at Shell stations. See? You can't go wrong with either. Visit www.shell.us slash get rewards and apply today. At participating Shell stations only. Terms and conditions apply. As many as 50% of people don't take their medication as prescribed. Some never even fill their prescription, even if they don't feel well. Missing or not taking medication can be deadly. For questions about medication, your local HealthMart Pharmacy is here to help. For fast, friendly service and affordable prices every day, visit your local HealthMart Pharmacy, Bowling Green Pharmacy, located right on the square at 8 North Court in Bowling Green. Need a little good news in your life? Well, here's the deal. State Farm has new, lower car insurance rates in Missouri, so you can now get the service and convenience of State Farm agent Cindy Blaylock at an even better price. That's right. State Farm can help you save more cash and get the good neighbor service you deserve. It's the real deal for car insurance. I'm State Farm agent Cindy Blaylock, and I'm ready to help you save. Call me today at 573-754-5575, or visit us in Louisiana, just a block up from the river. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Your 401k is likely one of your most important assets, but it's only one part of a comprehensive retirement strategy. Edward Jones can help you understand how your retirement assets fit into your entire retirement picture so you can work toward meeting your unique retirement goals. Contact me, Kayla Caldwell, your Edward Jones Financial Advisor at 2604 Georgia Street in Louisiana. Edward Jones, making sense of investing, member SIPC. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102 is brought to you by Community State Bank of Missouri, Family Drug, and Pike County Health Department, Home Health and Hospice. Final on this one, Monroe City 28, Bowling Green 26 comes down to a two-point conversion. Uh, The difference in this one. And uh, we had, uh, is that a final yet, uh, the Mark Twain and uh, Louisiana game? I don't have a final yet. Okay, no. so it was. A couple of other finals, though. Centralia be- defeats Southern Boone 26-12. to Hannibal beats Mexico 42 nothing. St. Pius the 10th beats Brookfield 20-6. to South Callaway, I think you told that score, 29-14. Mm-hmm. Palmyra 35-8 over Clark. Those are the finals as we have them. All right, uh, so it'll be uh, Monroe City and Palmyra 
Battle of Panthers to decide Class 2, District 6. And it looks like South Callaway against uh, Mark Twain for Class 1, District 2. Did we have a, uh, any uh, Montgomery score in there? Not uh, a final yet, no, North Callaway. No, let's see. As they go back to the EMO for the uh, district semifinal there. Yeah, I had a uh, old classmate sending me scores. Let's see if she's giving me an update. End of, end of the third, it was 34-28 North Callaway. Nothing since then. All right, so we'll uh, figure that one out. Uh, as the night goes along, uh, and they'll take on the winner of the uh, hallsville Herman game, whoever wins that North Callaway-Montgomery County game. So those are the uh, districts that our teams participated in, and uh, it looks like Mark Twain will be the only one of our area teams uh, in action uh, next week. Twenty-eight well, Monroe City will try and avenge uh, earlier loss to Palmyra. They lost 30-20 to 20 in that mm -hmm. game, so if you're just a fan of – High school football and want to see something very similar to what you saw tonight, head to Palmyra next Friday night. Yep, and uh, and experience their new facility yes, there, yes, uh, their new do. turf field there at the school. And, uh, boy, it's a it's a nice setup out that there. It, that it is. That and it conveniently is. located uh, right, right off yeah. the highway. Disappointing loss for the Bobcats. Uh, you know, you start adding up, you throw out the, uh, throw out the Oak Grove game. You start adding up their other three, three losses, and and, and uh, there aren't very, very very many points that decided those losses. So uh, tough pill to swallow for the Cats. Uh, and you know if they if if you, if they played their best, if they played clean, then you wouldn't be going to the locker room with their head down tonight, yep. maybe. But they made some mistakes. They were some costly ones, and some of them were just mental mistakes. Yeah. You know, you, you got to. You, you got to keep your head in the in the game and, and keep your 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 mouth quiet. Yeah. And uh, they had a, a, several unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. Yeah. In this the game. Was, we're not pointing fingers at anybody. This was a, a team wide. Yeah. Uh, there were several tonight. unsportsmanlike conduct penalties uh, in the game, and uh, and it may have been stuff they get away with any other week. It yeah. may have been this crew. Who knows? You, you know, you get used to the guys that you're around right. most often. Right. And this was a, a crew from out of town. And, right. And, and every, uh, every crew's different. And you're right. You get a familiarity and you know how different crews are going to call things. And you're right. It may have been something that uh, normally nobody pays any attention to, but they were paying attention to it tonight mm -hmm. for sure. And uh, it ended up being costly. That is a final now. Mark Twain over Louisiana, 36-24. to 24. So the Bulldog season comes to an end. And I guess that puts an end to our season too, eh, maybe? Well, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> you never know what, you what never we know. might cook up. But yeah. uh, I'm definitely mentally preparing for basketball <laughs> already. 28-26 is our final here from Monroe City. The Panthers over the Bowling Green Bobcats. Uh, Bowling Green's season ends at 7-4. and four. Monroe City picks up their eighth win to advance into that showdown with Palmyra next week. For Jim Ross, Mark Frunick saying good night. We'll see you soon here on Eagle 102. You've been listening to area high school sports on Eagle 102. Join us each week as we bring you the best of area high school sports on air at 102.1, online at kjfmradio.com, and on the KJFM radio app. You can find a full recap of scores online and daily during Eagle 102 Sports, all from your area sports leader, KJFM Radio.